Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, I'm joined by my friends... My pals, my co-host Kevin Mitchell and Alistair. Uh, so excited to see you guys. This is my favorite day of the week because we get to talk about League and all the LCS action. Uh, but first, let me catch up with my friends. How how is life treating you guys? I see Alistair's up in a new room. Uh, Kevin Mitchell, they all still look pretty much the same. But what's up? What's up with you guys? Give yeah. us a life update. How are y'all doing? Yeah, I mean, life's been going pretty good. Uh, it's kind of hot over here in SF, but the matches were good. I'm glad that they yeah. met something because so many matches are kind of feel like throwaway matches during the season. So it's a good weekend for the most part, you know. Up, up to a to point, a point, like so. TL losing <laughs> point. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I'm with you, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I, last few days have been kind of long. I uh, spent most of them in a car uh, getting back down to South Carolina. Mm. But aside from that, got to watch the games on the road and in the hotel rooms uh in a different building at school so that's nice change other than that pretty standard it's a week. nice change with the light in in a in your room i can actually see you yeah, man it is. it's like it there is, he is it? i'm so happy to see yeah. his face that's awesome what about you Mitchell? <laughs> how are you I, I, by the way real quick let me caveat this is take two of this intro because yeah. <laughs> mitchell's internet is going kaput so let's see if we can make it through this one <laughs> Yeah, hopefully I don't disconnect again. I don't know. I've been doing this podcast for like five, six uh-huh. years. And wherever I go, in five different places I've lived in, I have internet problems. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It follows me. It's super – I've had like four different computers <laughs> too. So I think I'm just cursed to <laughs> lag. Oh, I don't know why. It's uh, It finds me in-game as well. I think those are the most frustrating. Uh, but otherwise, it's been a, it was a good weekend. A um, lot of games. Oh, my God. They just like melded in my right. mind. But uh, – I'm excited. To talk yeah, about I mean, <laughs> and let's just run through real quickly. So for those of uh, who are listening who hasn't seen the final standings, let me just call it out so that we could get the final picture of where we all ended up. So mm-hmm. uh, in first place, we got Evil Geniuses, second place, 100 Thieves, third place, Team Liquid, fourth place, CLG, fifth place, Cloud9, sixth place, FlyQuest, seventh place, TSM, and eighth place, Golden Guardian. So those are your playoff teams. And then we have Immortals and Dignitas who... By no surprise, but they did not make it uh, into the playoff uh, round. So, you know, I guess starting with that, you know, that's the final picture, you know, and this being a super week, the final week. Was there any surprises with how everything played out? Like, what are some of y'all's like highlight moments that you remember or things that you were just like, as you were watching, you're like, did not expect that. Like, uh, was there any surprises or is this kind of like what you were thinking beforehand? I mean, the surprise I had is that the standings, the top three is the mm. same as last split. I mean, uh, same as right. last split's playoffs, right? Like, after all this hubbub about, like, Liquid slumping and C9's going to be amazing and all this stuff, like, we just came out with the same result. The The biggest surprise other than that um, is CLG ending up ahead of C9 at the end. Uh, honestly, props to them. Like, they didn't have an amazing, like, last week, but, like, they still made it across the finish line, and they got further than C9. So, that's crazy. If you look at that roster, that yeah. is insanity. That roster was ninth place minus Dokla. Like, that, how does that happen? So, yeah, for sure. big props to them. Yeah, continuing on that point, I mean, CLG, this is also an org that we're talking about has to have, like, some structural issues because of how bad they've been doing yeah. for a while, and then they just pull out with a budget roster and then next thing you know they're out doing cloud nine which is another big surprise of mine i i, I predicted them to finish first in the regular season they uh they finished what sixth fifth? fifth 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 yeah i also expected FlyQuest to be a bit higher but i mean when these things kind of shuffle they get dropped down yeah i mean the biggest i think the craziest thing to me is if uh, there's a four game gap between sixth and seventh place. Mm-hmm. That's really crazy. That's like insane. Uh, if there wasn't a reason to have a top six playoffs, that that's the reason right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if you go back to spring split, right, we would have a much more contentious just top six playoffs. But we have top eight, and we have a f- six and twelve team who could maybe play against a ten and nine team. Uh, it was, I think that's insane. Yeah, it's um, kind of a waste of time. But you know, honestly, like, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see. Yeah. But if, like, the, both of those teams that are in 7th and 8th, they get 3-0, then, yeah, it was a waste of time for sure. <laughs> I mean, because can we be, like, because they did talk about this on JLXP as far as format. Like, could this warrant a format change or something? But 
Uh, because realistically, I guess this is the question you have to ask. Does TSM and Golden Guardians, do they have a legit chance? Like, is there actually a world where an analyst says, picks them to beat any of the teams, um, you know, especially top four or whatever? Uh, we'll give them maybe they can pull an upset on, you know, six and seven or whatever. But do you guys really think that? Like, do you honestly think TSM or Golden no. Guardians could right? Yeah, hell no, hell right? Hell no. That's a- no. We, yeah. we weren't sure TSM was going to make That's playoffs right. and they barely did. Right. Like, yeah. I, I think predicting them to beat any team, especially when they're the next team above them, has four more wins than they do. And that's what I mean. It's a bit of a stretch. Like, that's why should we change 33% it, the format? win rate? Because it's almost pointless. Yeah. Well, yes, we have a 33% win rate team making <laughs> yeah, it in yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, that's pretty disappointing. I will say, with at least TSM in their last weekend, they pulled together some pretty okay games. They beat CLG, and I think they maybe beat another team. I don't know. But, um, they, like, some teams they do make these last these late like season changes like both Golden Guardians and TSM did. So to their credit, we don't know what's going to happen in playoffs for them, right? So we haven't seen the games yet. They both are very different from what they were at the beginning of the split and last split too. So there's still a chance that something could happen. Um, like I'm going to be honest, like CLG, even though they ended up fourth, they kind of had a disappointing weekend to end it off. They they lost a lot of games that felt like. They shouldn't have, mm-hmm. like, especially the, the TSM 100 Thieves game. It was like, you guys kind of shouldn't have lost, like, well, maybe 100 Thieves is more acceptable, but you guys were so ahead. So there there's some merit, I think, to maybe this specific instance where the two teams at the bottom made a bunch of changes and got some wins at the end in a weird way. Mm-hmm. But I think we've had this format for a couple of years and 7th and 8th have never done anything. So, yeah, it's yeah, I, I'm not really for it. I mean, if something different happens this year, who knows? I, I like the suggestion that I think uh, it was Jat made and that, you know, if anything, if you still want to give seventh and eighth a chance, maybe have uh, eighth play, seventh and eighth play each other. Winner of that plays the uh, sixth place or seventh place, te- wait, sixth place team. And whoever wins that gets yeah. top six. So then it would make it, you know, it still gives them a chance, but they have to kind of play for that last spot. And he was saying he would do it yeah. right after the games. Like, don't wait a long time. Like, let's just get it over with. Like, kind of like tiebreakers. So a gauntlet. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it, it. Sounds like a, it sounds like a play <laughs> yeah. slash Mini gauntlet, gauntlet sort of, uh, deal. pre-playoff thing. Either way, I think, Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't make sense as it is now. Yeah, I mean, borrowing an idea I heard from somebody Insight, like, or not even an idea, just a concept was like, basically the the top um, team, right, in in the bottom bracket is TSM because uh, they have six wins instead of five or whatever. And you're basically asking me for a six or five win team to win three games out of five when out of 18 games, they could only mm-hmm. win six or five. Like how it's, – it's pretty absurd when you just put it in that context, right? Like it's just these teams aren't there. And like out, granted, like earlier in this podcast, I said myself that I was like, I mean, it's kind of just combined the gauntlet with the the full format. So it's like, I'm kind of cool with it. But after having watched the end result and like emotionally seeing how it felt every time we got to this point, I was like, come on, guys. Like, we're, we're just watching, we're just watching an NA participation mm-hmm. award. Like, you know how you make fun of like American schooling where we're just like, everyone's, everyone's special yeah. and everyone's great. I'm like, great, awesome. <laughs> but this is professional sports or esports in this case, right? We're competing. It, it, it it might be fine in terms of like overall results, right? Cause like these teams will never make an yeah. impact anyway. So whatever. And if they do make a upset, that's cool, but it, you can't get like the whole prestige of even say I made playoffs last season. Cause this is just like, did you make playoffs or did you make seventh, yeah. eighth place playoffs? Cause 80% participation should never be the case. That's in true. playoffs. Yeah. And you know, honestly, this kind of goes back to the very first episode that we did for this summer split. I, I remember I was just saying, you know what? I'm not going to get overhyped because at the end of it all, it's going to end up basically the same. And, you know, with top eight making playoffs, like it didn't even really matter if Team Liquid ended up in eighth because they would still be in playoffs and they'd still probably be have a good chance of of doing well. So we're kind of in that spot where here we are at playoffs. I mean, we talk about what surprises. Yeah, it's cool. CLG's higher up there. You know, uh, it is kind of weird that FlyQuest didn't go as high or C9 didn't go as high as we thought. Uh, but in the end, they're all in playoffs, so anything could still happen. Um, so, I mean, I do I do think that they're... Now, EG finished strong 3-0. and They're number one dogs. Uh, I don't think that's really disputable. I don't think there's... They're clearly the best team, have been the best team to split. 
and Hundred Thieves pulling in second. Like, what do you what are your thoughts on these two teams? Because obviously they get a they get a break because they're not playing first round because they secured first and second. So, what are your thoughts where they ended up um, and and them moving forward into the playoffs? Yeah, so I mean, EG okay, EG got out. They were first. They've been first basically the whole split. But like, I take like it. They went three zero, and it was like less mm. convincing for me. I was I felt worse about them. Like that win against C 9s because C nines a bunch of <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a bunch of idiots. Like they were like, we have Soul Dragon in our hands, and let's go chase the <laughs> six kill by. And like honestly, Inspire outplayed oh, yeah. them hard, sure, but like there was still no reason to chase that kill. I mean. You, you want to go for the shutdown, but you only sent three people and then sent one person to TP randomly elsewhere. Like, they were very greedy about it, right? Um, so, I, I actually think 100 Thieves is just looking better as a mm. team. Uh, as of late, just their form has been better. Their wins have been maybe not exciting, but I, I think that they've just been a little bit better than EG as uh, as of late. But at the same time, I mean, it's an impact team. I, I'm not worried about them in playoffs. I'm just saying that their recent power level is lower. Okay. I, I yes, but I it's I don't know. I feel like they've got one like you said regular season impact. Also, they've been first the entire split. They're probably just kind of we've been saying phoning it in. I think this is definitely an example of it. I know it's a bit of a throwaway excuse, but throw it away, man. I, that's how I feel about them <laughs> that's right cool. now. Yeah, throw it away, man. I mean, <laughs> we, we've we've been saying this about this team pretty much all of this year. Like we were expecting them to phone yeah. it in. They all this mm-hmm. entire split was say, like, oh yeah, they're probably not going to finish first. Now they are first. Now that they aren't hard stomping every game like they were earlier on, we're just like, oh, you know, they're not they're not playing very well. I think I think it's partially them just phoning it in. I don't like the excuse, but I, I do think that's an exa- This is an example of yeah, that. I can see that. Yeah, I think I I don't I actually think like both hundred thieves and EG had pretty pretty medium pretty mid weekends. They both seemed pretty pretty meh. Uh, especially 100 Thieves last game against TL. I mean, it was just super meh, yeah. I, I thought. So, um, and if we want to talk a bit more about the EG C9 game, because I, I think it was probably the most talked about yeah, game. Maybe that was, TL 100 Thieves was a bit more, but like that, that, no, that <laughs> the game was Vi hype. highlight reel. Yeah, that was hype. That was really hype. Um, I got to say, Vi, I think, is a lot better mm. than I expected and a lot of other people expected, but she's still not great. And the only reason why she was good is because. Like she got so stupidly ahead that she went in and she didn't die, and I think that's usually like the biggest problem with Vi is like you go in and you die. Uh, you do get your CC off, but you go in and you die, and then you hopefully trade for the ADC or whatever. Uh, but he was so far ahead that he wasn't dying, and he was actually the one killing the enemy yep. team, uh, which is just a super rare case. I just don't think that ever happens. Uh, it's uh, inspired differently. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted to like just think about uh, that game in general and that um, d- just the way teams are playing against EG, the best team in the league, mm-hmm. right? And the best player in all of LCS for this split has been Inspired. And Inspired is definitely getting the MVP. Oh, 100%. Right? He's the best player 100%. in the league, best player mm-hmm. on EG, on the best team. Yep. And yet nobody ever attacks him. Nobody actually makes a game plan to put down Inspired. And it hasn't happened all split long. And I wonder, like, this was the biggest example where uh, C9 had the chance to take Olaf into Vi and completely dumpster her. They had LeBlanc mid and Sejuani top. Three winning lanes, or two winning lanes in the top side. And they never just invaded the Vi. They never tried to chunk her out or take her camps or pressure her in any way. And it just felt like such a waste, especially when Berserker went for that level one trade and got pushed in bot lane as well. Three pushing lanes into a weak Vi early. It, it should have been a pretty easy early game snowball. I don't know how the late game would go, but because uh, you have one one carry threat against an Orin still. But it, it just feels like no team is actually doing what you need to do to be EG. Um, and I'm kind of worried that if you know teams don't ever do that, what if they go to international and EG just gets really pressured in their jungle and they collapse. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? You know, how do we beat EG? What's what's their Kevin's secret ready. sauce? Kevin's ready. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> I mean, Liquid literally showed the framework the week before. They destroyed them in 24 minutes. Like, he, they saw Inspired playing in jungle, right, on his Wukong clear at Krugs. And they're like, yeah, screw you. We're just going to dive you. We know you can't do anything. They punished the crap out of him. He got Snowball. He went 1-5-3. Mm-hmm. and three. He looked like a chump. Like, I'm sorry. It's... He might just collapse to early pressure because his 
frankly, he is extremely good himself. But like, if your laners are behind, junglers cannot play the game. Even Cannon looks bad when his laners are getting smurfed on, right? Well, okay, Cannon's looking bad in general. But like, mm-hmm. peak Cannon. So my point is like, the format is there. It's just that other teams haven't shown their cards. Like Liquid needed to because they needed to get that second seed and they you know didn't cross the finish line but they had to show their cards there i don't think eg has shown their cards yet because they don't need to it's like they don't need to play or not eg uh 100 theses right they just don't need to they don't need to go super ham c9 i have no clue i have no clue what the hell they're doing with their draft like why didn't they just give blabber Olaf? <laughs> like it seems really nonsense like it felt like they outthought themselves they were like oh they left blabber Olaf up they must have a plan i guess we won't pick it and I was like, all right. All right. So you have no They're confidence in your like, mm-hmm. best player. Yeah, I don't know. This is R4 yeah, Viego. It was, it was up there. Right? I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, here's the Olaf. And then they did yeah. it. And I was like, what? It was a free Olaf. They mm. picked it R4. And I was just like, huh? Okay. Just uh, Viego and going to be useless for the whole game. Cool. Um, I yeah. mean, I also, I also think these another easy way to beat EG is just punish the hell out of their bot lane. Danny's lane right. still isn't yeah. great. And there's no way that's not going to get punished against better teams. Because, I mean, while they're they're not the best bot lane for laning, but they're still, like, on the top, like, four of bot lanes in LCS right now, I would say. That is not going to fly against pretty much any other major region. And if their bot lane is getting slammed that hard, you know what that also means? Inspired's going to lose a quadrant of his jungle. That's true. And then he gets punished. And now mid's getting pulled down. And the entire game's going to snowball off of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, too, like... You know, if Danny, the thing is, the, the problem with if, if you pressure Danny for some reason, like no matter what, how far behind he is, when he gets to team fights, man, it seems like that guy's always still going to do damage. Like I would if I was a team strategizing, I think I'd want to go after Inspired, right? Like, let's put the pressure on on him because he's really the early game influencer. Danny's laning is going to be what it is. But I think the, you know what they'd have to do is because, because EG is so good at playing around Danny, right? Like funneling him gold anyways, even after laning phase. And so I don't think, I don't know if pun going specifically for him, if that would cause enough of a deficit where he couldn't just make that up uh, later and catch well, up. It's, it's not just the bot lane. You use, you use the, the pressure, pressure yep. you take from your bot lane and use that to push it into the jungle. If inspired can only farm one quadrant of his jungle, he's going to fall it's behind. True. He's going to be useless. Yeah. You just have to make sure your top lane doesn't, uh, be Dyrus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and that's my really man hard Dyrus. to do though, right? Yeah. Like you can't just do that. You can't just have one team I focus know. the bot side and then the enemy team doesn't focus the top side. So it, it's a, it is a bit complicated in that sense, but I do agree, yeah. right? If you have an easy access to go into bot side, like, I don't know, impact's not a, a, a solo one V nine sort of carry type of player either. So, um, you know, inspired attacking up there might not reap as many benefits, but I, I am going to also just go with the, like, just neuter inspired playmaking because we've yeah. actually seen lots of times, especially in NA, not internationally, but in NA when Danny gets behind and lose, they get first blooded, they lose lane, they fall behind, they lose dragons. Right? Inspired just makes a crazy play somewhere because he's ahead enough in gold and experience, and he has the right champion to like flip the game essentially at like a rift herald. Um, and so I do think like neutering his champion pool and basically like forcing. Um, inspire to just not be on a champion that can make plays and um, and not be in a place where he has good tempo is, is really the, the way to do it. Um, but also, it's just like just drafting too. I feel like um, EG always plays this fine line of drafting where they don't have too much scaling or and they don't have too much index in the early game, but they have just enough where it's like slightly better than the enemy team. And that's what it felt like, especially in this EG C9 yeah. game where it's like, Neither team had great early game or great scaling. Like, they both had a mix of both. But it did feel like Evil Geniuses was just, like, uh, they had better scaling. Just a little bit, and it was enough. Because the LeBlanc pick was super freaking useless. The Viego pick was super freaking useless. And even though, like, Vi and Ari kind of fall in that same category of eventually they become useless, like, they got ahead, and they just had so much, like, one-shot potential on the Twitch that, like, It was just it so matter. depressing like, dude, to what? see every time. Wait, what do you do? It's Twitch. Every time <laughs> Twitch would show his face, Vi instantly ult that sucker. Like, I was like, every single time, what yeah. could they do? I felt so bad. This is why you need to be bring. This is why you need to bring back QSS Flash. Yeah. 
That, yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. No, no, that invalidates a whole no, character. Yeah, like, it's not I don't okay know about for that Chaos one. Systems. It might work anyways, but I, I still think that mechanic sure. should be brought back anyways. It was a skill based interaction. We worked yeah. by, and then we <laughs> maybe can talk. it's a, it was yeah, it was pretty enough. it was pretty broken. Uh, if you're I mean, yeah, but at the highest level. levels of play, it was pretty broken. Yeah, I mean, it was it was taken away for pro reasons, right? Because Uzi and Ruler were doing it all the time, and I guess Riot hates that, but um, I, <laughs> I I think that like I don't know, it's just I. It doesn't work though. Like it doesn't work if Vi is not ahead. Because if Vi instantly gets one shot after she ulties, this stuff doesn't happen. But Vi got ahead, yeah. so I, I hope that teams don't get caught in like the trap that thinking Vi is a great champion. You now. know she's they're fine. gonna. She's solid. You know they're, they're gonna. gonna. Like I just hope. I think they will. Yeah. Because I actually think Vi is good, and only because it's in pro play. Like there's no delay. Like everyone is on the same page. It's not like Soul Q where. Mm. Me having played a lot of Vi, you know, through my jungle career, I was like, I just don't think she's that good. Even when she was good, she just had good stats. But in pro play, like, I've seen enough of this in LPL, LCK, and even in LCS, right? Like, where I'm like, okay, I'm convinced. This character is fine. After the durability patch, the just one-shot Vi is just so hard to do. She oftentimes goes Sunder, mm-hmm. so she gets another 300 health, and then she, she survives long enough to get her shit off. And if she's fed, she'll carry. And if she's not fed, she'll at least, you know, kill the carry that, like, is more of a problem than she is. She's She does the whole Nunu theory. I make the other person more useless than I am, and that's all she needs to do. Like, you, I saw Berserker get his, like, he just got crushed. He couldn't play the game. No matter how many mechanics you are, Vi's just like, ah, oh, screw you. And then everyone mm-hmm. else, like, piles on, right? Yeah, I, I, I would agree if there weren't champions like Wukong and Poppy there in the meta though so I, I think that they just provide so much more that it's like you can say Vi is fine but we're in a world where we're min-maxing I just think that Vi is like just fine she's okay she's not bad but why play Vi when you play Nocturne sure yeah I mean there's just I think there's a lot of champions out there that like they they do a lot of the same things but they don't suffer from this Vi problem where like she has a non-existent early game where she's completely tied to her ability to cube someone, and it's just such a hard ability to land in the early game. So, I don't know. I I've played a lot of I too. I, mean, I just we'll, I just we'll, think she's we'll see because like, okay. I mean it is it is uh you know one of those things where again like when you're drafting like why I think Alistair you said it best that like you know why play a champ you know because yeah maybe Vi is good but there might be better alternatives and if you know there are other champs that can do kind of the same thing but. Um, hey, J4. I mean, honestly, yeah. J4 to an extent, right? Like, it's he has a lot, like the one shot of just little single target, but you're not always going to be able to rely on the fact that C9 is going to draft a one damage comp. Vi also falls off a lot if there's one damage, if there's like more than one damage source too, right? So it fit pretty well into this comp, mm-hmm. but like if they had like a, a control mage instead of a Blanc mid lane, it doesn't work as well. It's actually just a lot worse because you have Zonias and stuff that comes in too. And this is a bit troll. I don't actually know if Berserker should have done this because it really felt like he was just freaking useless. But maybe you should have just first item Zonias or like second or third item Zonias instead of the GA or like... Because it's like, it doesn't matter if you have three damage items if you just get one shot, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I was thinking about that in game. Like, should Berserker have just gone like Bork into Zonias? Is that too troll? But he's not doing anything in the fight anyways. It completely negates Vi as a champion also. That's just food for thought. I think it's interesting to think about things like that. Yeah. 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 I don't hmm. know. Um, well, it, if it doesn't work, he gets he gets flamed anyways, right? So I would have just tried it because <laughs> he's not playing the game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I did feel bad for him. He didn't get anything. He wasn't able to do anything. But um, yeah, I mean, let's <laughs> no, let's let's talk, though, about the other hype game, um, even though I was very sad to see it. And that's uh, 100 Thieves versus Team Liquid. Uh, and it's funny because we write topics that we want to talk about in discord and uh the first one mitchell typed was tl sucks so <laughs> i <Oops>. was very <laughs> I, I was very sad <laughs> because me. uh Ugh. the thing is i was meme, i guys. was very hype and then here we head into the last day of lcs 100 these or steam liquid i was like this is it i watched like the first few minutes of the game i'm like okay this is going good this is going good and then they break my heart and just totally ruin and throw the game. And so, yeah, right now in my heart as a TL fan, I'm saying they suck. But what do you guys think of that game? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you guys speak because I, I'm, I'm very disheartened by it as a fan of Team Liquid uh, because there's so many things that I wanted to yell at them for uh, in that game. And they just managed to do every single one. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on that game? 
I mean, okay, so teams aren't perfect. It's NALCS. However, I will say that like what Liquid has shown is their early game plan, their early to mid game plan is solid. They continue to punish other laners, including this team. Um, they punished FBI Hui really hard actually early game. They actually could have gotten a few more kills if they played just a little better. But like I think Santorin's been on, been on like padding Nirvana for early game. He has gotten so many kills early game. It kind of feels like um yeah, it just kind of feels like when you like saw peak Yankos or something, like just randomly getting first bloods everywhere, like even in front of the enemy jungler over and over. Like mm-hmm. he was in the same quadrant while the, the enemy jungler was taking a camp next to him and he just goes for the dive and they keep making it work. So I think Liquid has a great formula there. It I don't necessarily think it will always work against international teams, but it's a lot better than waiting for them to scale, right? Like putting pressure on them is a way better thing than like letting them play their game. Uh, the biggest problem is Liquid is their team fighting is like, bottom bottom five mm-hmm. right now like that that late game was one of the most atrocious late games mm-hmm. i have ever seen in my life like i think senna and seraphine are disgusting characters Ugh, we've talked yes. about this on the podcast and off the podcast right guys but like i don't care when you were up like four or five k before they had their items like there is no reason like Centaur was actually doing well. In my opinion, Centaur did his job. He got a carry out. Like he killed Gwen or he killed whoever with his Skarner all. And then they just funneled into a choke and lost. And I'm like, how can you keep doing this? Especially Bjergsen. I think Bjergsen played actually pretty well the last two weeks until that game. Oh, yeah. I think he played unforgivably mm-hmm. bad in that in terms of how he chose to position, how he chose to all, how he chose to do anything. He altered late sometimes. He just didn't all or he didn't engage like. Honestly, I thought that game was on Bjergsen's back. And Hansama, who got a lot of gold. He was a six-kill server mm-hmm. that did not feel like anything. My biggest complaint about this game is why in the world is Sivir and Azir, the two champions who are building healing reduction in this game? Why is Aatrox not building Chainsword? Mm-hmm. Like, they built it really late, Those are the worst reduction items in the game. I, I mean, they, they shouldn't be item. building in the first place. It's it's not good. It, the stats are bad. It tanks your damage so much more. Like, imagine if Hansam has GA or Bloodthirster or something that actually does anything. Because he's getting... He has already has Kraken Slayer and Berserkers and Phantom Dancer. And now he's building a fourth attack speed item with the, when he already has Lethal Tempo and his W attack speed. And he might have Alacrity. I don't remember his runes. He's getting basically no value out of the attack speech. He's spending 2,600 or 2,500 gold on 40% healing reduction, which, yeah, is good. And then 25 AD, 20% crit, and it's like 7% movement speed when he's playing Ghost at Sivir. Like, I, I just, it, it's terrible. I don't know how you've managed to throw this game, especially with a team that scales this hard, and you're playing Skarner, and they have five, five champions who could all are all viable to be Skarner ulted, and there's one QSS on the enemy team. Losing this game, it, that's not a good look. Mm. Yeah. It, it shouldn't yeah. be possible to lose that game. I, yeah, I mean, they're up 5k at 15 minutes. Like, that, <laughs> and it, like, I think some people were saying in, like, the Reddit post or on Twitter, maybe that it was a draft gap because they let Seraphine. It was not a draft gap, right? I thought the draft, like, I will say that in general, right, Seraphine is probably a no-no to give away and a very broken champion. And Gwen is in the same kind of boat, probably a no-no. But I would say Team Liquid drafted tools pretty well to deal with the enemy comp. Um, they, it was not a draft gap. And then there aren't many drafts that lose if you're up 5k at 15 exactly. minutes. Like, it's just... That's like, the error. not when a lot of drafts si- that lose. When you have Sivir as yeah. here, too. Yeah, they had late game scaling. They had engaged. They had, like, lots of CC. But, like... It was pretty disappointing. Um, so you already, Kevin already talked about Bjergsen. I mean, he had that really terrible shuffle that lost him that bot fight, right? Well, let me uh, let me a, pause that weird flash. Let me Senna. pause real quick on that because yeah. I did just watch like a blame game uh, with uh, Mark Z analyzing Bjergsen because that oh, was the big thing where they, you know, all the blame was on Bjergsen. So he analyzed it. That specific play you're mentioning, um, one, it looked like it was a bug because FBI should have been shuffled back, but he wasn't. Um, and then there was another one where it ended up, I forget which player, instead of going mm. with the wall, he got knocked up, but he stayed behind the wall. Um, and so there, 
Okay. So remake. So, uh, okay, we're good. So okay, anyway, end of discussion. all that to say is so that you, you know, for those of you listening, check it out because it is pretty good. But he 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 analyzes every one of Bjergsen's fights, and part of mm. it is also like because yes, his positioning was not good, and he couldn't get in there and really do damage. He also was walled off at some point with with Talia's wall uh, in one of the fights, and uh, they did put some of the blame on actually uh, Santorin later when it came to target selection like i think he he targeted gwen a, a lot of times where he could have easily targeted other carries um and so anyways I, all of that to say is because we were talking about the bjergsen thing uh, okay and i don't i don't sure i'm i'm on the fact that just watching the game i i i wasn't impressed i was very yeah, i didn't think he was doing well at all but looking at some of that it, it kind of gives him i guess a little bit of footing but anyways you can continue though <laughs> I, you can try your best, Lee. Yeah, that's fine. They, it was a good effort on, you man. put there. I, I was a little sold. Uh, no, I mean, okay. So if it's a bug, it's a bug, right? I mean, he's literally the bug catcher. He's the one who pauses for every bug in his career. But he didn't. So, I mean, that's a bummer. Maybe he should have paused. He's been pausing games for his entire career, and that's surprising he didn't, I guess. But um, regardless of that, all right, we can take I – w- I wasn't even going to go in that Bjergsen in that much. Santorin, definitely. I've played so much Skarner in my life. Um, Skarner is not a teamfight champion, actually. Yeah. Skarner, you need to make picks, and you need to be proactive and regularly make lots of picks. So whenever you see a fight start, and it's a 5v5 situation, and five people running into each other, as in Cordy J is engaging or something, or someone's getting caught, but they're all near each other – I mean, you're already playing Skarner wrong, right? You're supposed to catch somebody off guard and drag them into your team before the fight can yes, really begin. Yep. Otherwise, you'll lose a lot of value from Skarner. And I think one of the big problems is Skarner is good into Gwen if you can do it before she can press W. But there's a lot of times where Skarner ulted the Gwen, but she had her W up and she wasn't getting as much she wasn't taking as much damage as she should have, and that was a big deal because if she lives, then you got Seraphine Senna heals. She heals herself, and she just kills everybody, right? Like, I swear to God, someday was just spamming abilities and killing people on accident. That shit was so busted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, He's like, <laughs> like yeah. panic buttons. Uh, whoops, I, I didn't even mean to kill you, but I killed, like, three people and healed for 5K. Like, it's just not a balanced champion. Yeah. So um, that was ridiculous. And then finally, um, Cordy J had some oh, of the worst misses, man. man huge huge flubs two fights he didn't amumu ult at all one fight he completely whiffed it on a tp in gwen uh other times Mm -hmm. it's like he's ulting in on the back line and it looks good but there isn't actually anybody there to follow up one was that talia wall from the rift herald kind of unlucky right but it's like you're not allowed those mistakes because they have seraphine senna so and not on top of that, your carries aren't playing very well either. I actually think that even if they lose that Rift Herald, if Han Sama and Bjergsen are actually playing well, they could still win the game. Fine, because their champions are super strong. Um, but last thing I want to say about this game is the itemization, right? So Alistair touched on the like super late game mortal reminder. Yeah, they had no one good to apply Grievous Wounds, and I think the answer is, unfortunately, you just don't build Grievous Wounds. Mm. Maybe you build Thornmail on one of your melees or something. But otherwise, you just don't build it. I Because it does 25%, sometimes 40%. But it's like, I don't know. It's it's just, right, it just well, seems like a waste. Let, let me interject real quick. And, here, here, here's uh-huh, what I want to okay, say. Interject, here I want to yeah. say. Interject. Here's what I want to say. <laughs> is I think we should be tweeting <laughs> the Mark Z because I would love to hear this discussion because he actually, when he did the blame game, put the blame on that they didn't build healing reduction earlier early enough in fact they bring it as far back as when uh that bottom fight where wukong barely lived uh because of all the healing that he had from his passive from divine sunder from whatever things that he had and so he broke down the math and he was saying that if they would have had healing reduction at that point they would have uh like it would have been like 800 damage like not being able to be healed. So all I'm saying is that I want to tweet this po- this podcast and and quote so that we can have a discussion between you guys and Mark Z and yeah. see what you guys think. No, because- he did the math. I didn't do the math. Okay, so I, I, I didn't agree. do the math. I agree. Heal reduction was necessary. I'm arguing it shouldn't be on them on Sivir, Azir yeah. and Sivir because those two items are completely worthless. Mm. The stats are terrible. It yeah. should be second item on Atrox. I- 
100%. Maybe. No, I argue it should have been on Civer. No, wait, wait, wait. Because you, the problem is not like in a vacuum, yeah, it should be on Atrox, sure. But Civer one applies it the easiest because they're all grouping around Seraphine. Two, it was a 6 0 Civer. So she she had the gold to spare. We had an 0 5 Atrox. Where was he going to build that item? When was hmm. he going to complete the item? He was, I mean, you're was already utility like, bot. Put it on this bit, go second item. I think if you want to build it on Civer, you have to sack the Phantom Dancer. Going two attack speed items is just not worth it. Like, how is Atrox going to apply Grievous Wounds to more than one or two targets? There's a sack of fights. meat, anyways. <laughs> Maybe. It doesn't matter. The, the point's not him being a sack of meats. He just can't hit okay, anyone. Okay, so put it on a Mumu then. He's playing into Tali. Or he's playing to Tali. How is he going to hit multiple people? Yeah. He's di- he died I, I, seven times mail playing mail. out with Hourglass anyways. Put, give him a thorn mail. Maybe he'll be useful. I just... <laughs> mortal mortal reminder's terrible. Like, the item's just bad. <laughs> Morel and Omicron is not much better. No, they're both terrible items. Like, that's why enchanters are so broken right now. Because you can exactly. build Chemtech Putrefire. I, I, I think that there is maybe... a an option to just build executioners early on Sivir and never finish the item. Yeah. And then when you get to six items, my, okay, here is where I think the real problem was, was that nobody built Serpent's Fang. A Sivir should have built Serpent's Fang. I think that that item would have done so much. Like guys, the item like actually annihilates Seraphine. It's such a good item. And she, he was really ahead. And I'm going to be honest, even though they had a six item Sivir, like they were losing the game when he was on one and a half items. Like, he was in that Rift Herald fight with one and a half items, and they were losing team fights before he even hit three items, right? So the crit passive and all that stuff in IE, it doesn't matter because you already lost the game because it was so... You guys already fell so behind, and clearly, Bjergsen was just not there to play, right? <laughs> yeah, so I yeah, think... unfortunately. I don't know the math, and maybe someone could do the math and say I'm wrong, and there, but there is some merit because nobody in the LCS builds this item, is maybe you just built Serpent's Fang on Sivir early on, and you just dumpster them because Seraphine and Senna don't ever build armor. You're going to just nuke their shields off. You're going to nuke their HP bars. And yeah, you delay your crit building item later. But like the game was decided before she got three items anyways. Before she even got two items. So maybe you just build Serpent's Fang and you completely invalidate what makes Seraphine so strong. Like she just becomes an ult bot at that point if you can just cut down her shield. So... With with and that's just not that's not that's more than just this game, guys. That's every game. There's Lulu and Yumi and Seraphine in every game, and nobody's building Serpent's Fang or getting champions that can apply Serpent's Fang well. The ch- the item actually invalidates those champions. It's such terrible game design. You guys should abuse it. I that's just my two cents. I love from, I love uh, that when Mitchell gets hype, he starts blabbing words that like mix together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also do want to say, Kevin, that another reason why. Mortal Reminder is not that good on Sivir. It's just because if you're going to build Mortal Reminder on Sivir, just sit on Executioners, which is already not a good item to sit on because 25% is not, 25% is like nothing. I mean, it's better, than, it's better than nothing, but not by much. Because with Mortal Reminder, if you want the 40%, you have to hit the same champion twice back to back. And it, yes, so it won't, it, you won't get forty percent on your W bounces. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta do come punch. Yeah, executioner would have been fine. Yeah. yeah, like that. That's fine. It's yeah. not great, but it's better than building the entire item. Because if you're forced to build the entire item, like you're you're screwed. You're just you're I tanking think, your damage so much. Even even if you're an ADC and you have a lot of crit chance or whatever, I still think you build chem tank chem punk or whatever chain sword or whatever I, that I, item I is. I agree. Because that item is just better. It just has way better stats. Um, It's way less useless. And I think the passive is a lot easier to apply. You just have to be below 50% HP or something, right? So much simpler. If you're below 50%, uh, it's just so much simpler. Exactly. You get a, you get 300 health. You get way more AD. It's yeah. easy. The, the, the combined cost. I don't know, man. Just just the itemization is just so yeah. whack, especially when enchanters are in the meta. Like your itemization really has to be on point. I think because yeah. cause they're, they're, your kits are so simple. They're so easy to execute that you need to really have the easy stuff, like your item builds down to perfection, or. You're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of value. So yeah. No, they're they're talking about this on the yeah. co stream. They're saying that or someone in their chat said they should make uh, heal reduction boots. Yeah. Make them like make them like sixteen hundred gold. Oh my god, that would just Dude, that I'm, would be terrible game I'm design. <laughs> I mean, have we? Why have we never talked? Why has the community never talked about how the durability patch was supposed to reduce healing, reduce shielding in the game? And while they did that, they also nerfed the shield cut from I think they did from no, service shield, shield and the healing. Nerfed. Okay. Yeah. But then they nerfed the healing off of all the healing reduction items. It used to be 40, 60. And so, yes, they nerfed healing across the board and shielding across the board. But then now the heal cut items also 
I think it went down to 50, 35 for a bit. And now it's thir- uh, no 50, 30 or whatever. And now it's 25, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, 40. Yeah. And I was just like, am I, am I insane? Am I just like in the <laughs> twilight zone? Am I missing something here? Why are all the heal cut items, which were already annoying to build, getting nerfed alongside the reduction in healing in the game? You're, this makes no sense. This is just like Rai pulling the wool over your eyes and be like, oh, there's yeah. less healing. Look, the numbers are smaller. And then they just smack the items That's that actually true. do the heal cut. I don't get it. I, I think it's because think it's they realize how bad of game design it is to be like, I buy this item and I invalidate a large check of your kit. And the real problem isn't like the items. It's just the fact that there is so much healing and shielding in the first place. Like they, it, it's just like Moonstone is just a broken item. Like, yeah, no, I, I just don't like the argument of like, oh, we can't make kill reduction core because it uh, invalidates so many kits. Have you seen how many champions get screwed over by QSS or Hourglass and they're allowed to exist? Hmm. Yeah, I th- I also think it's it's bad game design too. I mean, like that's why assassins suck in pro play all the time forever because you'll you'll just see five stopwatches on the enemy team and the champion's completely yeah. invalidated. I mean, they, stopwatch is a broken item. Hourglass is definitely a broken item. Heal cut's also just a broken content. I mean, it's not a perfect game, guys. There's a lot of flaws in League of Legends. Yeah. No, I mean, so, her, so I, her, I agree with all your points. Reduction's necessary evil. It just like it needs to find a balanced way to be in there, and they haven't found that way because if they want to put good. it on. Yeah. Like, it's ba- it essentially makes enchanters or heavy tanks like necessary because thornmail is decent and um what's it called putrefier is like really good you can first item putrefier and you're not you don't even mm-hmm. care chainsword is also very good but it, it did get nerfed a little bit i think it was this patch so yeah, yeah. all right well I, I i i'm just gonna go out and say like we've already said it before but like yeah i know like enchanters are taking over the meta right now and like it's just lulu yumi seraphine every game but we could have been doing this stuff three years ago guys <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah the durability true. pages happened and, and yeah it helps but these champions and these items like moonstone and putrefire and mikhail's have been broken for like since the mythics came out like like i i just it's also just the fact that like pro meta is just so behind the times of the actual balance of the game and then riot's balancing it around pro meta so you just get really ridiculous stuff when people actually figure out enchanters it's like oh my god this stuff is just super broken how do we play against it what is it and then we go to aram and it's like well, you just see enchanters every game all the time, and we already know to counter it. And it's well, broken. you know what, Mitchell? Leon is more fun, so That's you're wrong. That's exactly what I was going to say to Alistair, is that <laughs> we, we talked about this last week, you know? <laughs> Pros don't necessarily play what is the most, like, you know, min-max way to win the game, right? Like, I go no, back don't. to the yeah. same thing with, with the NBA, with the three-pointers and two-pointers. Like, it hasn't been a secret. Like, it didn't take some genius mathematician to come up and realize that, hey, if I shoot a lot of threes and make at least a certain amount of them, I'll just outscore my opponents. Like it's, it's worth it if I can make it most of the time, but yeah, (laughs) is it flashy? Does it look cool? No. And so I think pro players are just the same way, man. And and it's going back to this, like enchanters, is it broken? Yes. Is, can it work? Yes. But is it absolutely boring and there's no skill expression and I'm basically just a bot, you know, like, of course that's gonna, that's gonna be on their ego. So, but all of this to say is that, okay, that stemmed from the whole topic of TL sucks because they don't know how to build, right? <laughs> and so yeah. here's my question now, though. they Can they beat FlyQuest? Because that's who they're up against. Uh, look, I know FlyQuest uh, didn't end up as high as maybe we thought we were, but it's still close. And they beat 100 Thieves this past weekend. Uh, and, you know, we just talked about how 100 Thieves dumpstered TL. Well, not dumpstered, but beat TL. So... You know, what is your thoughts moving into this first round with TL and FlyQuest? I'm not taking them for granted. I mean, obviously, FlyQuest has proven that they can win. So this is not a good matchup. Like, I, I'm kind of nervous. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this? TL already beat them twice in regular season. I'm not that worried. Okay. I, I wouldn't be if okay. I were you. I mean, I don't Thank think you. That is comforting. those games were <laughs> super... I don't... If I remember correctly, I don't think either of them were super close games. I don't think they were super one-sided, but like... No, there was that one FlyQuest game where they were all super ahead and then Johnson flashed in at Baron and they lost. Oh, so Was that yeah. against TL? That was against mm-hmm. TL. Yeah. Okay, so yep. never mind partially, <laughs> but either way, TL won. <laughs> TL, they've played twice this split. TL won them both. I'm liking that. I'm, not True. That, I would, I'm liking that, Alistair. I, I would lean to... I, yeah. would, I would favor Thank you. Thank you. That makes me feel better. <laughs> 
I think historically I've brought up the infamous example of multiple splits where C9 2 0 Liquid during the regular season and just got destroyed like 3 1 3 0 in playoffs. And unfortunately, like playoffs is just a different beast. This was when Liquid had impact, though, to be fair. <laughs> Playoff um, impact. I think that FlyQuest, like the, the bigger issue might just be that it's a bad like matchup against Liquid. Like, to the credit, FlyQuest has chewed 100 Thieves. They are worth half of 100 Thieves losses. Like, wow. that's really impressive. Yeah. If this was 100 Thieves in this life, Liquid had won that last match against 100 Thieves and won the tiebreaker. That's Why true. be sweating right now because this is their, like, bracket to demon, fair, essentially. La- I think it was last split, Dig was... Dig was also half of 100 Thieves losses or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Another top yeah. tier team. Dig was like 4 they, including Lockheed. Yeah, they went 4-0 <laughs> <laughs> against, the te- against the team. Like, That's I, I get where you're right, reaching, right, right. but at the same time. At the same time, we've yeah. seen it. I, all I'm saying is FlyQuest isn't that bad, no, but yeah. they just have a bad matchup. They're playing against a team they've lost against, Yeah, don't have a good history against. Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, we could win against them, too. I mean, we just had two people DC, and we could win, probably, maybe. But, like, that's... The, I, I can mean, play a moon with better than like Cordy, right? yeah. uh, I'm just going to say that right now. Yeah. I, I think, can play that shit better than him. <laughs> just to add a little bit of analysis into this matchup, like, is, dude, Whippo is just so much better than Philip. Like, Philip can play well, but he this is a bad matchup for him. Like, I think Philip into a little bit more passive, like Someday or Fudge this season, it's okay. He'll survive. I mean, he did it in the games they played, right? But Whipple is, like, literally just there to beat you. And, like, he does not care if he will die. He will, like, dive you. He will call Santorin up or Santorin will call him in. Mm. And they'll destroy him. So, like, the, it's just too mismatched. Like, I, I, I feel bad for Jose Diero. He's just got to seed all of Harold's side of map. And Harold is more valuable here in playoffs because of the buff to Harold, which, again, is a little weird to me because they wanted to make Dragon more important. I don't get it, Riot. So, I think Liquid's going to win. I think Liquid... This is a perfect game for Liquid to get momentum into. I don't know who's thieves. in their side of the bracket, but it doesn't matter if it's EG or 100 Thieves. It's still like, it's nice yep. to have a nice warm up game. I like it. Yeah. I, I, I also think uh, Team Liquid is pretty favored. I've, I've lost a lot of faith in FlyQuest. I still think they're pretty good. Like, they're very clearly deserved to be in the top six. And then there's a large, large gap between the rest of the league and them. Um, but. Like they, they just don't have the cleanliness in the mid and late game. They do have solid early games and they all have fairly solid mechanics, but there's just way too much like getting caught out, way too much discoordination, way too much like YOLO plays that don't work out and lose them the game against the top teams. Like FlyQuest is just on the cusp of actually being a really good team, but they're not there. And I think that Team Liquid is like, they're more like on the cusp of being a bad team as in they're a good team (laughs) that does bad stuff. Right. So like they're, they're like looking from like opposite ends to the same image, but they're still on different ends though. Um, And Mm -hmm. I, I I do think there's also like that sort of like Bjergsen looked like crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like on Sunday and so did core JJ. They looked so bad and kind of Hantama too, but FlyQuest is probably playing like close to their best, and I don't think TL is. I think these players do pick it up when they get in playoffs. Historically, that's how it's always been, right? And we don't know how it's going to look like on this exact roster in this year, but historically, all of these players look a lot better in playoffs. And if I'm expecting TL to look better in playoffs and FlyQuest to just maybe have a bit of like drafts prep, prep or something, like. I think FlyQuest is playing some of their best League of Legends, just like how I think the same thing with CLG in the regular season. And I don't think they're going to be able to bring it to another level in playoffs. They, they, This roster in spring, they look the same in playoffs as they did in regular season, which was pretty decent and pretty good, but it wasn't enough. And I, I think it's going to be the same. So yeah, I, I think TL is going to take it. Yeah, I think that it definitely, and I wouldn't, I would imagine most analysts would also pick TL to be favored to win there. I think the closer one, or maybe... Maybe is it close to you guys is the CLG C9 one, right? Uh, For me, at least, because CLG has proven me wrong, you know, a few times this this split. And so and C9 in the other direction has surprised me in more of a negative way where I thought, you know, I I thought they would do better and they've kind of underperformed in uh, versus expectation. And so. I think this series right here is going to actually be pretty exciting, hopefully. I mean, that's that's what it seems like, unless C9 just turns it on and CLG goes back to being CLG. But what do you guys just thought? Like, is this – like, did, do any of you, first of all, have CLG winning this? Because technically they're seated higher, but, you know, Cloud9 is Cloud9. They got some names on that team. But 
Do any of y'all, let's just get that right off the bat. Does anybody think CLG is going to win this one? No. Sad I want time. to be the one. No. You want to? I, I really want to be the guy. Mm. But I'm, I would – if I if I was forced to do a prediction, I would say three one C nine. Dang it, Alistair! This is the yeah. org that helped you when you were in L A. <laughs> I and... know. Look, I'm not <sighs> flaming them. I'm not flaming them at all. Where's the loyalty, man? I, I want them to win. <laughs> I want them to win, but I don't think they will. If I'm forced to make a prediction on who yeah. I think is going to win, I'm going to go three one C nine. If I if I if it goes how I want it to go, I would say. Uh, five game series for CLG. Okay, but I don't think that's going to be okay. the case. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be the case. I, I forgive if you. If I'm buying a jersey, it's a CLG jersey. Yeah. But if I'm putting bets on the table, it's Cloud Nine <laughs> yeah, every day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm using the bet for the Cloud Nine there game to is. pay for the CLG exactly. jersey. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> how, how about this? If CLG if CLG wins this series, I'm gonna pull a Kevin and buy a CLG yes, jersey. Yes. There we that? go. Hey, as you let's should. Go. CLG Alistair. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah. We've been saying I'll, it. I'll, I'll be the Kevin. There we go. Yeah, I mean, hey, right. I keep my bets. You know, that's hey, all I'm yeah. saying. I will too. CLG's CLG's just so dope. C nine is lower seated, sure, but I mean, they're still eleven and five with their roster. Like the thing, the reality is like it's eleven five versus eleven seven team, and like eleven five is a much better record than eleven seven. It's actually significantly better, right? So the only thing that was good about C9 this weekend for me, it was like, well, I guess they're, they're convincingly below liquid right now. So liquid yes. is in place to go to world as the third it. seed right yeah. now, right now. Right. The way C9 is playing. Cause they are not that steady, but they are just so much better than um, CLG in terms of like firepower that they just need to hit three times out of five. And in my opinion, it's going to happen. It's going to be a three, two. Yeah, I I think it's it's going to be C9, and it's the same argument that I use with FlyQuest, is that I think CLG has been playing just their best League of Legends like, throughout the regular season. I don't think C9 has hit that point. And then you kind of saw this weekend, like they, they were getting a little funky with their drafts, right? Mm -hmm. And Nivea, Zillion, Mid, both their champions have been absolutely bonkers broken since durability patch. And finally, someone managed to pick it. Jensen picked it, and... I really like that. Jensen's always been known for some unique picks. Every now and then he brings out, right, he was bringing out the Heimerdinger. Yeah. He was bringing out the Lux in playoffs. Super weird, random stuff that was not in the meta at all. And Nivea and um, Zillion are not currently in the pro meta. But these champions got a big buffs in the durability patch and are actually really, really, really good scaling champions into the right comp. And I got to say, man, like, some of that stuff is unplayable. Like, mm -hmm. that Anivia game was unplayable oh gosh, for the enemy yeah. team because of that one champion. Same with Zillion, right? It's like, you're the, like, FlyQuest's draft was so all in -y, and then they just countered with Zillion, and it's like, they didn't even play it perfectly, but um, the champion is just so broken yeah. into the right comp. You know, I um, like so that, though, when, when they don't necessarily have to be the best Zillion. Like, you don't need to be a Bjerg Zillion, right? Like, you just picked it because it's... Yeah going to be so good to counter what the other team is trying to do i wish we saw more of that if even if it's not technically in yeah. meta but they're like well this one champion like how you mentioned the garen pick against fiora right okay it's not pro meta yeah. but how spicy would that be and you literally pick you might not be the best garen in the world right but you don't have to be you just need to play it well enough to uh do what it's supposed to do which is counter that that cha that other champion so uh, no, I, yeah. I like that. But, you know, speaking of that meta, like we we jotted down a bunch of meta stuff in the discord um, and we did see some interesting things this week. Right. With Draven uh, being played a lot. We saw some ghost ADC, which Alistair, I know, mentioned last week, too. Uh, so that was pretty neat. And then you're going to have to explain this truck meta for me uh, there, Mitchell, because Mitchell listed truck oh. meta and. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. That's for later. That, that, we can leave that for after, later. After the meta talk, like, we'll talk this about is the real meta we get talk. out of LCS. See, this yeah. is why I yeah. See, I, I never understand sometimes. I'm like truck meta. I miss it. Oh god. I, I, look, I, I think I don't think we're in a truck meta yet, considering uh, NA can't even get out of the airport meta. Oh, so. true. Oh, Speed true. run airport. Actually, actually, you know what? Worlds is in. NA, so they can't be. There is no airport meta. Oh, you know, T oh. TL needs oh, the truck it's meta. Our time to join the truck meta. Honestly, TL really desperately needs the truck meta right now. Like they, they are desperate. See, no, we, we're just talking about it too early because we're alluding to something that we haven't even talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll okay. get there. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, what what else do you guys want to uh, mention? I guess because I mean, those are our two matchups for the week. Um, there are a couple of other teams that are just waiting in the wings. We got, you know, Golden Guardians and TSM. Is there any thoughts that you wanted to mention on on those teams? It, it kind of does seem like, you know, they're just, 
I mean, are they even in the conversation? Right. Do they even deserve? I have something. Okay. I have something. Hmm. So we did this last year. I remember because yeah. uh, this is the end of the year. And it's the end of summer split, and you know normally there's like MVP stuff and like most mm. impro- best rookie, blah blah blah. I want to know who gets the fake god award. Who gets the fake god award for this split? Because that's that was the best part of last year for me, honestly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Just getting the meme on fake god. So I'm curious who you guys thought got the that's fake god award. It's actually kind of hard to think about this yeah. split. Um, there fake wasn't god one, was in so his own category. Fake God really was his own category. <laughs> Summit yeah. was in his own category Summit, too. Yeah, the oh worst my MVP gosh. of all time. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. But, I, don't know. Um, I don't really have. Just, I can't just, really I, think of any. I don't. I don't think it's that difficult. I, I don't. Are we? Gamsu was literally benched. Oh. Like Fake God wasn't even benched. I mm, forgot Gamsu. about Gamsu. Even forgot about him because of, Gamsu that's how did not have went. his bad. Gamsu was solo killing people at least in top lane. I mean, like, I, I would argue the same thing about Neo. I forgot about Neo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Neo yeah, also got benched for Swan Spawn? Spawn. Spawn. Yeah, that's true. Spawn. Spawn. Neo was pretty Spawn. bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Neo. Neo was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought Spawn was better. Yeah. No, Spawn's yeah. definitely better. But was it, was I, I think it would be what between one of those two players. Maybe tactical. Maybe tactical gets the fake god award. <laughs> Just Ooh. benched in th- three weeks. Was ta- <laughs> tactical played this? Game? Yeah, right. He played like. Uh, I used to stop the. Two f- games? I, I think tactical gets his own reward for that. Yeah, he gets. His, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, no, no, you're right. It's, it's tactical. Yeah, it's tactical. He, he played so badly. If we, if we just count the whole year, like he played so badly, he just got removed. So did fake god. Fake god solo killed somebody last year. I'm pretty sure, and it was pretty impressive. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> yes, but that's not the that's not the context you're going under, Mitchell. You're, you're going you're going like you can't set your own rules and then break your own rules, man. Hey, like, there's no rules to this award. No I just made it up. Do whatever we want. Made this award up. I can do whatever exactly. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. My award. My rules. Right. There are no rules show. with Fake God. Fake God is everything. Uh-huh. No, I'm I'm done with Mitchell. It's got to be tactical. He he played. He played like a power inter in some games. Soul lost some of his games and then was benched. Like that's what else can I say, right? He literally solo lost games. True. Like that is the fake god he award in my mind. He literally just ruined TSM's so Neo. year. <laughs> okay, yeah. Neo, I think would get it if he was just more popular. Like if okay. if he was just more of a known, like if we if, like we were just if he was talked about so, more. So we're just we're just we... going full on into the popularity contest, <laughs> yeah, even though we complained about right? the popularity contest no, all the time. No, God was right. popular. Well, okay. He was pop. He was a popular meme. He got made fun of, like in popular social media. <laughs> Neo is not even talked about. Tactical at least gets publicly memed, so he fits into. Neo the had better. a two point six KDA, and Tactical had a one point seven. Oh, like it's not oh, even close, yeah, dude. It's tactical. As an AD dude, carry, Tactical had a one point seven KDA, and he did one percent more team damage it's than Neo. Oh, like God. all that in team for what? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like they're like in a different realm. He's almost fifty percent worse. Actually, he's more than fifty percent worse mm. KDA That's wise. Really bad. Which isn't everything, right? All right. But, I'll, but I'll, that means I'll that one is dying a lot more. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I like, I, I like, are I like we, this award. Are, so we're doing it, this every year. Is this a uh, is this a consensus <laughs> then? Does tactical get the or Alice? Are you sticking Let's your guns? Let's go. He wants something this Fake year. I, I, we have I the majority would, of the I would votes still go towards Neo, but if the consensus is tactical, fine. <laughs> congratulations! I'm not, not going to sit here and argue it. Congratulations, <laughs> 2022 summer LCS split <laughs> winner of the Fake, Fake God, God Award. Goes to tactical. tactical. Congratulations. Let's go, Congratulations. Edward. All right. Hell yeah. Well, Alistair, you Bruh. wanted to talk about Ghost Ghost Draven. <laughs> no, go, well, Ghost and Draven, not the same Yeah, time, uh, that's what I meant. So, ghost and Draven. Oh, but yeah. maybe. Should you so, go Ghost I mean, Draven? I will Ooh. say it does have, it, it does have hmm. some potential. Okay, but it's okay. Not yeah, so, so yeah. first of all, Draven's not that strong. But he's really good into some of the champions that are being played right now, especially mm. Sivir. Sivir just can't exist against Draven. She has less auto range. She does less damage to minions early. She loses. She it used to have a really one-sided support matchup, and even then, it's still difficult. Draven can one v two that lane. It is like sometimes it is absolutely unplayable, and it's always good seeing Draven become played in pro play because you can always tell who's actually a Draven player and who. Yeah. popped off in a couple solo queue games and said, hmm, I'm going to try this in scrims. Seems oh, easy. I played four games in scrims. It had 50% win rate. Let's, let's play it on stage. Yeah. I, I love Draven. I think the he's so hype. I think the mini game of trying to get a kill under Draven, especially when he doesn't have one, is so funny. Uh-huh. It's so hilarious to watch a team try to give a kill to Draven, and then he doesn't and get don't. it, and yeah. you're like, 
no, it's a thousand gold. It's like so much. <laughs> I think funny. it's the best. I think it's the funniest mini game. I I love that he's he's like has a place in the meta right now because mm-hmm. we never get to see him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's, he's so yeah, entertaining. He's very entertaining. Oh, for sure. I like like L L nine memes aside, like the champ's so fun to watch. I, I also love it when someone drops their axe. You just see him wailing on people doing no damage without an axe. <laughs> yeah. It's so f- funny. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love that champion. And there's clear counterplay to his kit. It's such a rare thing in League these days. <laughs> when you watch I mean, Zeri he's a play the game. One champion, so of course he has counterplay. He's, no, he's season three. He's season three or two. I was, I was there when he came okay, out. Yeah, well, he's a later. Yeah, he was he was in a release champ. He mm-hmm. was he came a little bit later, but he's pretty old. He's very very old. Yeah. 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 He also dumpsters Callista. Also, Hansama is a Draven exactly. player. So for playoffs, you know, I just have I my copium. I haven't been that impressed like, yet though. He played it twice so far. Nah, he needs practice. <laughs> I, I, didn't think he, I was I knew he was a Draven player, but I, that's why I was watching. I was like. I mean, he was all right. I just didn't see anything crazy. His win was fine. His loss was yeah. Yeah, so-so. Like, he got a 1,000 gold sh- trash in and then mm-hmm. just didn't do I think do you anything. need to wow people, though. With, to to yeah. have a convincing Draven, you really need to wow people to convince. Yeah. I mean, Dra- like, Draven's one of those champs where, like, if you're not two-shotting people, people think you're useless. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's because he yeah. kind of is, is a little true. bit. Like, he, unless you're against, like, a really squishy lineup or, like, the enemy team, like, you're a single AD threat or something like that. Like, if you're not, like, popping people in the mid and late game, you don't really provide that much compared to other ADCs. Yeah, that, like, you're not you know. playing for mid to late game on Draven. Exactly. You're playing for a 25-minute game. Like, and then and then you yeah. just think about, like, TL, right? It's like, oh, they dumped to the early game, but oh my god, Santorin yoinked first blood from Draven, and you're just like, okay, yeah, just go next. That was funny. Oh <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Well, what about... Right, let's uh, talk about Ghost. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying, like... Yeah. What you, Alistair, you call this, and I have actually seen it more in solo queue now, but uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Have you been playing it that, a lot? So this is one I've been playing for over a year. Wow. I, I've been calling this for a while. You can ask my old teammates. I played it in competitive. It's good. It does take away a, a bit from your laning phase. It adds to your laning phase somehow. and also gives you so much more resets, so much pop-off potential because... So the reason a lot of people take heal is because, one, it obviously works with your support because mm-hmm. it gives, heals your support, but it also gives both of you movement speed, but it only gives like 40% movement speed for two seconds decaying, something like that. And yeah. people have already stopped taking heal for the most part because the summer spell is just bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but so what Ghost allows you to do is you can just run people down. You can position so much more aggressively. And that's what you can always tell like the really good ID carries. They will know their spacing to like to the pixel and ghost allows you to do that so much more aggressively. So like, especially on, I mean, champs like Zeri or Saver, obviously That's true. Uh, it gets yep. even more exacerbated, but if, even if you're playing it on like Ash or Caitlyn, it mm. can get pretty crazy because it allows you to play so much more forward and the resets allow you to clean up kills. It basically makes almost every champion jinx. Yeah. I, I also think ghost has a lot of value um, with obviously with the durability patch, heal is just objectively worse because the number is just less of your total HP, right? Um, and then ghost, it's like y- you can get away from some ganks that you can't without ghost. Like yeah. sometimes you can't get away with a gank, even if you flash, even if you exhaust or heal or barrier or something like that. Sometimes you can only get out of the gank because you have ghost. So I think that can be really valuable. That's why champs like in top lane sometimes take ghost, right? Um, like Gwen and Darius, and then you see some junglers take it, like Udir and Hecarim and stuff. I, I think Ghost should see more play in general. Like, I think TP is a little overrated. Obviously, TP is broken in pro play, but I do think it's a little bit overrated for some champions in mid lane, too. Um, and I think more junglers could also opt to taking Ghost. Um, but finally, I think the biggest winner for Ghost is the fact that there's no, there's way less kill lanes, way less hard CC in the support. So there's an enchanter. Right, they're mostly just slows, yeah. and sometimes there's hard CC, but it's almost always skill shots. Ghost is a lot better than that, right? And you know, like you, Ghost does nothing if you get chain CC'd by Leon and Nautilus. It does, it's actually completely useless because you can't move at all. Um, so I think that it's also just a big meta uh, adaptation that it just works a lot better with Enchanters because you can also just use your shields and heals more often too because you can kite in and out. Um, it so also I just think, has a it has a lower cooldown. It's 180 yeah, seconds. It's a very short heal, cooldown too. Four minutes, entire minute Dude, longer. You just bust that. You see an enemy jungler come up. You just turn that thing on. You might not have. You there might have been zero chance of you dying. You just bust. Turn the ghost on. Like you can't touch me. I'm not dying to this gank. I don't care. I'm not missing the wave. Yeah. So I I think ghost is pretty pretty awesome. I do think though, right? If 
champions get a little bit squishier or if we go back to like Nautilus, Leona, Alistair, every single game, you're going to see a lot less heals because you need, or you're going to see a lot less ghosts because you need the heal or the combat summoner uh, for those like 2v2s, uh, all ins at like level 2 or level 3 or something like that. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I for think sure. ghosts is just going to be a mainstay. I mean, just thank Doublelift for making that YouTube video, right? <laughs> Everybody started taking ghosts as soon as that YouTube video came out. Um, so. Or yeah. they should have just listened to Alistair. For crying out loud. True. True, like <laughs> six months ago. Exactly. Yeah. Hello. If they listen to Jinx See, from Alistair a long time ago. It's just she, a popularity true. contest, guys. Yeah. It's stupid. So it nah, doesn't exactly. make any sense. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I should have gotten uh, LCS MVP. <laughs> unlucky. Unlucky. True. <laughs> true. <laughs> Next time. Next, Next time. time. Yep. <laughs> Get the rookie of the year and the yeah. MVP. And MVP. Same yeah, that would be one. amazing. Has that ever happened? I don't think that's ever happened. Huh. Is there a... Is there a uh, a new patch this week? Is it 12.15? Nope. 12.15 no, still... is what we've been playing on, and I think it's staying as the it's playoff staying? patch. I'm okay. pretty sure. Okay. 12.16 so, yeah. uh, is hasn't come out yet, so okay. I don't think they can... Yeah, the preview came out today, yeah, so but they can't the, put it there's in for no this way to fly <laughs> for this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 12.15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Did uh, was there any? Did I miss anything as far as meta goes? Did, was there anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Uh so, I mean, I guess it'd be cool. Uh, shoot, there was there was another thing I wanted to mention, but I kind of blanking out right now. One piece of news. Oh, no, this was it. This was about champion design because we talk about this a lot. Oh. There was a Reddit post. I think it was you, Kevin. You Somebody posted it in our Discord. Yep. But I'd also read it and it was talking it. about Zeri and just how like champion designs, <laughs> oh, you know, and talking about how like overloaded kits are. And then they, of course, had the picture of that. A riot employee who said, you know, we don't think our champs are overloaded and basically was just saying that like Zeri is one of those champions like Rise Impossible to to balance because of such an overloaded kit. And, uh, you know, I wanted to yep. get your thoughts real quick on that because it's true. And they list what was crazy about the, the post is that they listed out every single change that's happened since her release. And it's it's a lot. And once again, I think in 12.16, they're they're nerfing her again. So uh, crazy. Yep. I mean, since I have it open, yeah. I'll just start. She's been nerfed 10 times, guys. Dude. She was released on patch like 12, 2, or 3 or something like that. She has 10 nerfs, including hotfixes. Um, and then she has one buff, which was to her little laser thing, which was the most nonsense thing, which had to constitute even more nerfs. Yep. On the buff, the patch she got buff is when Ocean Song Zeri was released. So it's very obvious why they put <laughs> yeah. that buff out there, right? Uh -huh. um, but it's just, it's ridiculous. Like... I can't remember a character that came out that was nerfed as much. I've remembered characters who are like as broken, like Akali on, on rework, right? Very broken. But she wasn't nerfed as quickly, I think, as there is. 10 nerfs in 13 patches is absurd. And it kind of just speaks to like, we can't keep putting characters in there. We're not playing an MMO. We're not playing like a PvE RPG, right? Like we're not just like trying to be OP and just like give a power fantasy to the guy playing the character. It's got to have some ability to interact. Like this is this has been boiling up for a while for everyone, right? Thirty three penta kills. <laughs> I don't know if it's globally or That's I think crazy. it's globally, right? It's like a record. And she's only catching up to like lifetime penta kill counts for some of the top characters. Jeez. And every time she gets one, like no one's excited. Yeah. Dude, it's just, it's inevitable. Yeah. Like, she, as long as she's alive, she's like, she just starts chasing five people mm -hmm. down as they run away. No other AD carry, except for Twitch with a Yumi on it, can do that. Twitch the ghost. And no other AD carry can. <laughs> <Twitch> <laughs> yeah. the ghost. But like, Zeri just is such Good one, Alistair. a pain. And like, it's just impossible to balance. They keep putting characters out like this, and I'm just sick of it. Like, I, you need more characters like Vex. You need more characters like Lilia, which are good, but like, they aren't fundamentally broken, right? If you tweak their numbers, they're playable. If you keep putting out characters that just destroy the game, if they have any viable numbers, like, the character's just never going to be played because it's going to be nerfed into ground, or it's just so broken that you don't have fun. Yeah. And why do we keep doing this? I don't like, know. I'm just so, every time I hear a new character come out, it's not like in back in season like seven or eight where I was like excited. Yeah. Now I'm just dreading You're it. You're dreading like, it. I That's hope right. it doesn't break the game. Yep. Yeah. And then I ban it for like the next month because I don't oh, want yeah. first timers playing it. <laughs> I do, mm. do want to say, I think the word overloaded is wrong here i think her kit's just fundamentally broken overloaded means it has just way too much stuff embedded in the kit her kit oh, yeah, is fairly yeah. simple it's just not it's not balanceable the way it's set up and that's the issue with zeri something mm. like Agreed. gwen it'd be closer to overloaded or i mean viego obviously viego but i i would say calling and i know i understand like the whole meme like i completely agree with the meme a lot of the kits are very overloaded zeri isn't overloaded it's just not balanced mm -hmm. mm, i i think it 
it's in the smaller details. It does feel like Zarya's kid. Like overloaded, it's just a term that we're applying to the situation that there's no actual yeah. true definition, right? But I think well, there's a lot. There of, is one though. Not for legal. The, the definition is something. No, the the definition for overloaded is something that just has like a, it's just a kit that has way too much shit loaded into the kit. Zarya yeah, but you have see, you use a lot of much. terms that aren't purposely defined in League of Legends terms, right? It can be overloaded has a real definitive definition in like electrical well, obviously riot had a different definition of what overloaded is because right. they said it yeah. wasn't in their champions and like obviously whatever we're seeing is totally different so like what aspects of a kit do you define to be overloaded i see it as overloaded because she has a lot of little things that add up that don't need to be there right she can take shields her mm -hmm. uh moving speed is unlimited uh her range gets like crazy long with certain items her on hit applies in really weird ways her w is like a slow and an aoe and like can shoot through walls and has a crazy range her e has like multiple modes where it's a mini dash and an auto reset or yeah. it's a huge gap closer and it makes her auto attacks do aoe's uh, she has she has so much mixed damage like these little things that add up like that to yeah, me is no, what you're, makes you're it right you're, you're right yeah, overloaded yeah. no, you're, you're, so, you're right you're right i'm wrong yeah, I mean, you made it's, a case. it's it's like it's semantics. It, yeah. it is semantics. It really is. Um, I I do think that Zeri. I, I do think the infinite fantasy with Zeri. It doesn't work because of the way that she can go in and out of team fights. It works oh, with yeah. stuff like Olaf and and uh, Swain because you have to actually be on mm -hmm. top of somebody. Yes. But with Zeri, mm -hmm. you get to leave and come back, and that's like the real problem with it. So I think they need to remove the infinite stuff with her. That would be like yeah. a good way to go. I mean, and then just they, the they shield leave stealing? the infinite, just lower the range. It's like maybe same, that's same issue like Callista. Yeah, like maybe lower. You can make it infinite, but like you can't leave a fight for like three to four seconds and come back. Like I don't know what the yeah, duration is, but true. it's like there's too much of a gap. Like with Olaf and Swain, you get to a certain point, and if you haven't damaged somebody in like two seconds, then you it just goes away. But it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like that with Zeri. Uh, and she gets move speed, so she can also like make it more... I, I, and then also, it's just like the Enchanter meta, too. The Enchanters are so broken with her that it's a combination of so many things, man, that make her so crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, the champ's not balanced. <laughs> I, I, I've gotten pentakills with Zeri on Aram, and it's Yeah, fun. me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, 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 I feel oh, for a day, I get to feel like an ADC god, even though I'm just literally spamming Qs and I just run it in and out. I, I love it. I was it. playing with Kevin. Bro, when Samira was released, I got a pentakill in my like, second or yeah. first game of her on Aram. Yeah. I was like, I felt, Loved it. I felt empty. Yeah. I was like, cool. No, it was good. I, I did I it. Remember, <laughs> it was like very early on into the Zeri release. I played an Aram with Kevin and I got a pentakill on Zeri. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I mean I, a I, I weeks got a pentakill like three games in on uh what's it called? Uh Samira's hotfix. Mm. Mm. Lovely. So, nice. I mean I loved it. By that, but I mean, Alistair, Dyla. that doesn't make yeah. a difference because you're good. Okay, yeah, you're I, good. I didn't. Know <laughs> I got a pick to kill on Zeri, and I suck. So that's what makes that part <laughs> yeah, spectacular. A, a two okay. jungle mains and a support yeah. got a pick hey, to kill Zeri. Hey, let's There's go. A problem. Okay, and to be fair, I just think yeah. Riot's Riot's been kind of dropping the ball with AD carry designs recently. I just I haven't been excited for an AD carry since yeah. Aphelios. I I enjoy playing the new ones, but like it doesn't like when they're coming out, they're just not generating that hype that they used to for me. Gotcha. It's like oh Nyla, I'm playing Samira, but worse. Yeah. Oh I'm Zeri, I'm Different. playing Ash Lista. Yeah, Ash -Lista. Oh boy. I'm playing Ezreal, Ash, Ash Callista, just like yeah. just <laughs> ultimate kite move speed. And uh -huh. I don't know, it's just a crazy chance. It's like what else four champions. It feels like the eighty carries that they're coming out with. Don't like a lot of them. A lot of their like mechanics are not like individual champion mechanics that you can master. It's just like in general, like if you're good at knowing when to go in, congratulations, you've pretty much mastered Samira and Nyla. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, I've yeah, never gotten a pentakill on Samira. Character. I've played her a bunch in Aram. Literally, cannot get a pentakill with her. I'm, I don't know. I'm just bad with her. I don't know how or why. I, I don't know what to tell I you. I feel Mitchell, like I should yeah, be getting pentakills with her, but I can't do it for some yeah. reason. I just run it down. <laughs> um, okay, I have a. Does anybody else want to talk about Zeri? Because I have one little snippet uh, for a cool okay. meta adaptation pick. So I think we're gonna start seeing more J4. Right, he got uh, buffed and he's been being picked. When like Wukong, Poppy, mm -hmm. and Trundle are all banned, he he does finally see play as like a fourth, fifth, sixth prio, right? Uh, yep. He's pretty good yeah. into the meta, right? Mm -hmm. He's very good into enchanters because none of them have dashes. 
Uh, and he's good into a lot of the ADCs that aren't Zeri, like uh, Twitch and Sivir, because uh, they can't really get out, right? So I think we're going to see more play with him. Mm. I'm going to be very sad because I know everybody's just going to take Conqueror on him. Conqueror is mm. easily one of the worst runes that's like viable on him. So it is a viable rune on J4, but it's the worst one that's viable. I think if you want damage, then you just go Electrocute, right? Or Predator, or Lethal Tempo, or anything. And if you want, like, you know, Sustain or whatever, you can be in a 40-minute game and have 200 healing on that rune. It's really just not about healing, right? Everybody says it's about the damage. The damage is very low. So I went and practiced Duel because I play a ton of Jarvan, and it's just super negligible when you compare it to the other damage runes. Here is an actual broken rune for J4, and there's a Guardian. Challenger... Uh, that one's pretty good. I think more in Damn pro it. play. I'm. I think I'm talking about. Okay, so that's also by challenger player named King Nidhog who plays just a ton of J4. He popularized yeah. Guardian like years ago on J4. And yes, that is mm -hmm. proven to be pretty darn good, especially if you build a bunch of supportive items like Redemption, Anathema's Chain, even Moonstone, stupid stuff like that. That's a very viable play style. No one's gonna play that, obviously. <laughs> cause stupid stuff. Yeah. Unless you're SOFM. Unless you're SFM yeah, and maybe true. if you're inspired, right? Because he was already doing that Nocturne. But other junglers true, just don't. Yeah. Like, you're never going to see Blabber doing that, right? But there's another keystone <laughs> that allows you to actually still build damage that I think is very good is Phase Rush. I think Phase Rush is super, super good on J4 because uh, the lower cooldown on his E makes it if you stack enough haste, your EQ combo is like about three to four seconds. So you're Phase Rushing, you EQ in, you run away, and you EQ again. And you don't take any damage because you run away so fast and they're CC'd. I think it's very it, – it requires a bit of a play style. But when you play it with Phase Rush, God, you feel so useful. You feel so good. You're always in the right position hmm. to get your next EQ off. And I think that's what people don't get is that you don't pick J4 for damage. You don't pick mm. J4 for anything but a CC. And if you build a bunch of ability haste and you get Phase Rush, you're going to be sticking on people like nobody's business. And then King Nino, like he specifically like goes Stridebreaker. That. So he goes Stridebreaker, Death Dance. I can see it. No, it. I think it's a pretty decent build. If you still want to go Gore Drinker, I think it's perfectly a good item, perfectly viable. You can still do yeah. Gore Drinker with Phase Rush. It's pretty freaking good, guys. I think it's easily his best rune. If you guys want to try it, Watch him challenger King Hit Nick Hodge streams. He plays it all the time. If that doesn't convince you enough, you can watch me play it and I'll smurf on people with, <laughs> <laughs> with Phase Rush J4. I was actually going to say that. It. I was like, Mitch, I want to queue up with you sometime and you see know, this you know, J4 you know in do. action. <laughs> You know what, what we should what do? Should we we should just like play some normal games as a group and just all play what we preach. I'll play. Yeah. I'll play like Ghost That's and true. Draven. We'll have Mitchell I'll play, play like whatever random thing he's concocting now. Yeah. So, fa so Phase Rush, Jarvan. <laughs> That's true. We yes. have League Dad play like Yumi or whatever. He'll probably yeah. be like. I would Dillard. do that <laughs> just to annoy Alistair. You know, <laughs> yeah, yes, I would. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can yeah. all day. I, I got like five or six accounts, so we, we can, I'll, I'll account hop. Who would yes. Kevin play? <laughs> Who Kevin would play? play Ash Evelyn? support or any ARAM abuser. No, I'd dodge if he picks Ash support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, but I'm so good at it. Go, man. Man. <laughs> Korean Ash support, bro. It's yeah. the most useless thing. I'll just play a top lane. Don't it's worry. It's the most useless thing since Misfortune support. <laughs> Hey, it's it so is bad. seeing actual, genuine I pro play. Okay, that, that shit I, won two games at Worlds. Okay, I don't know about most useless okay, look, I, I, support. I, I'm not condoning it, right? But I have played a few games of Ash support, and it does suck. Like, you're useless, like, early game. But once you hit, like, level 6 mm -hmm. and then 11, once you get to 11... Get, get Imperial Mandate. Once you get to the point where you start coin flipping the game <laughs> on hitting an arrow across the yes. map. Yes, really no, no, good no. I can coin flip the game. Yeah, Draven's okay, also not, broken, guys. But not just that, but if you max E, I think, second, your your hawk shot's up, like, all the time. And so you do get a mm. ton of vision. And, like, late game, it, it's helpful because your team is going to be idiots. They will walk yeah. into, like, mm -hmm. unwarded areas and just die. So if you could spam hawk shots, like, into objectives... Like that's that's way valuable. So I will I will I don't want to condone it because yeah, uh, you I, pr I prefer to hit early. my ward button, but that's just me, I guess. Ah, you can't ward though. You're Ash. You just die if you ward. Yeah, see? That's why you don't brain. play Ash. No, that's why no, you, you have hot shot. shot. Local map <laughs> and then ward. See? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Uh, <laughs> you know what, Alistair? I think when we play, I'm gonna play Ash support. I think Ash Ash support. Yeah, let's let's go. Go. I'll, I'll just I'll just play Draven top. It's fine. I've played with enough Ash support to know that if someone locks it, I'm dodging. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, that's it's it's just not happening. It does nothing. 
This it's is why NA doesn't know matchups. Right. We just dodge the good characters yeah, and then they Ash, beat us really at Worlds and we're like, what yeah, happened? Hey, have she's getting wins in LCK, man. And it is because... Yeah, you she's just, literally getting wins in LCK. Just, it's, it's just an uninteractive play style, right? The, the whole thing about Ash is like... I, I'm being picked because I outrange you and you can't interact with me. If you ever jump on me, mm-hmm. you are way overextended, right? And then you're killing yeah. what an Ash support. So woohoo! So yeah. that, that's and that's you do small have strategy. great. You have good CC. You have you great okay vision CC. control. You have See, pretty maybe, good vision okay. control. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it has some minor amount of viability with the best players in the world who can abuse the low cooldown hawk shot. When I'm yeah. playing solo queue and my support who only plays true, Yumi true. and Sona decides to pick a champion <laughs> with skill shots, uh, I'm not going to play the game. Yeah. yeah. There's no point. You. It is an instant loss. You're going to do nothing in lane. Like I said, I, I'm not condoning it, Alistair, but against I, with you, I would love it to can, play. It can stick <laughs> to mean, ARAM. Kirk. It was just like AP Kaisa. It, AP Kaisa was not good. It was just fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, that's so also another about, thing, maybe. too. Ash support is kind of yeah. fun because it's like, it's hee hee, yeah. I'm just annoying you. Hee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hee. Uh, I also it's will like say. It's like every mage support bot lane. It's not good. Yeah. It's just It's just fun. It is fun. I I tried to play Ash support. I missed all of my ulties. It was very <laughs> sad. I, I would I would unironically have Mitchell play or have Mitchell play uh, LeBlanc support than have someone play Ash support. Over hey, at, LeBlanc wow, support, wow. I can kill close. people. You just click people. Exactly. It's not that hard. LeBlanc support something. wins the early game. So you do your job, so it doesn't True. matter afterward if you, you suck. Yeah, I, it's just Ash support, you just man. Win lane. It's so funny. I just could not land an ult. I got spam pinged every time. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. Uh, I like, I'm not. Stuff. I'm just saying I have fun with it because it is fun. I, I don't know about my ADC, but for me, it's fun. So no, no, uh, I want to shoot myself. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Any uh, before before anyone gets started, yeah, let's get to the truck meta. That's true. Let's get to the truck meta. Yeah, what's the truck meta? Uh, explain me. Yeah, Go explain ahead, this to me, yeah. please. Uh, since you don't know the the context, like that, I'll help fill you, you in and the viewers. So the truck meta is actually an old meme. So back when T1 was having a really bad split before, you know, they were like swapping between their like 10 man roster that Coach Danny, the T1 fans graciously sent a truck to the T1 headquarters. Uh-oh. And the truck was just like a big like signboard, you know, kind of like an advertisement yeah. truck that said like, we must like fire X and Y coach and we need to like put X and Y, yep. play, put Faker back in, you know, like not necessarily all unreasonable, but it's just kind of crazy. They just set a truck. Yeah. Down. And so <laughs> yeah. this is where the term truck meta came in, where we're like, their meta of fans flaming their team is way ahead of our meta. <laughs> mm. Now, the reason why it's coming back up again is because recently they have once again started flaming I T1 first. T1 lost like two matches to split or three <laughs> like series. That's it. They're, they're still second place right behind Gen yep. G guys. And they sent another truck saying that the coach needs to be replaced because the coach is, has never won worlds or whatever. Like they need to bring coaches in who have history of either, you know, being at a world champion or having w- coached a team that won worlds. Even though Danny coached uh, Damwon Kia, I think, way back in the win. And that's where he's famous from. I think that's so where he's famous So one of seven from. people so, like, in the again, world. They, Got it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you could pick players, right? Which is a lot more viable. But the, the point is, like, it, it's kind of ridiculous. They're having a decent split. Guma Yushi is not good. So, like, yeah, they're sucking. But it's not just the coach's fault. It might be partially the coach's mm. fault. But, like, they, they sent trucks in. And That's more funny. T1 drama because, you know, the, it's just like TS, NA TSM, yes. dude. They, or Korea TSM. They just, it's the gift that keeps giving. Uh, Joe Marsh was in a private Discord of t1 fans and i mean i'm not gonna get too into it because it's really weird but uh he he just like made comments about his players like he said owner is uh got like the bot or whatever and he's a thirst trap yeah. I, I don't remember the thirst trap part i remember Whoa. for sure he said trap. um like shirtless owner is like a thirst trap or something and i he kind of justifiably got flack for that but like the flack went very far right mm. i think joe marsh is trying to appeal to like the casual Western audience, but like they're it's a Korean yeah, one. So like they, they see their CEO just calling their like I don't know how old owner is, but like it's just it's weird, weird to be calling them a thirst trap in a like private Discord. But it's Discord, guys. Discords aren't private. People will see this and they will post it on the internet. So that's the T1 met the drama Ooh, and the truck that's meta. Spicy. That's just right, I want to comment. It's only happened like the last week or two. Yeah, I want to comment about the Joe Marsh thing because if you've ever heard him in like interviews or like um, 
uh, when he was with uh, Double Lift or whatever talking, or you ever hear him talk with LS and stuff, he has the full on like bro vibes. Like he is just a he bro. He, he's bro Marsh, mm-hmm. okay? And like, it, it's <laughs> not out of character for him to say these things. Yeah, it's pretty weird and inappropriate, but it, by no means is it out of character at all. Like, this is like totally what you would expect from him if he's like hanging out with Double Lift and on a co stream talking this stuff. Was it stupid? Yep. Yeah, he did not read his Korean audience at all. That was bad. But if you like go to Western audiences and you looked in like the Reddit comments or even on Twitter, everyone's like, "This is just made up drama. Yeah. Why is this on my feed? This is so stupid." And I, I kind of have to agree. Like, sure, if you're in Korea and this is inappropriate for you, that's fine. I think a lot of Western audience is just like, "Dude, whatever, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, unless I get yeah, some I serious, say- genuine accusations that Joe Marsh did something." I really don't care. Right. Because right when Kevin was saying it, that's that's automatically what I was going to. And I think it is a cultural thing because for me, I'm like, listen to that. I'm like, I'm kind of laughing because it sounds like something you would say about like your like a like a buddy, like, you know, like you you obviously Mm -hmm. know it's a joke and it's like extreme for a purpose because that's what makes the joke. Right. But it's obviously very different in, you know, in Korean culture, you know, the, the way they see that. So, you know, I, I get it. It's just like how like certain hand gestures here, like would be fine. Like I know the okay sign is like, that's no, no big deal. Yeah, exactly. But you know, other places it can be crazy. (laughs) Right. And same, same with other things. So I, I can get that. And I totally don't see a big deal in it, but it is, it is interesting because it is like a Korean organization. So you know, yeah. well, what's going to happen with that? Yeah. So Most of their spicy. money comes from Korea. Like, there's not that many North American sponsors mm-hmm. who want to sponsor a Korean esports yeah. team. So, like, I think from a business side, it's a little it's just unfortunate. Like, I think he has the right read on how to get Western fans. But if you burn bridges with your Korean fans, like, yeah. I mean, it's literally the light blow to the team. So, exactly. it's awkward. It's really inconsequential for us, at least, yeah. as Western fans. But, like, uh, man, I feel bad for him having to deal with that it's just not it does not look fun yeah, yeah so i don't feel bad he kind of brought it on himself so whatever he's a ceo you he can just read the room wrong you're a ceo i don't think you should be able to read the room that wrong though that's, that's the thing it's like calling my employee well, hey. i say like mitchell's mitchell's like my co-worker right i'm just like mitchell's got like the best body like he's a Thanks. thirst trap and i true. just post that on social media as the ceo it could be true but, Kevin. but this is the same esports that we work in where TSM had Reggie as a CEO, man. Like, yeah, true. Yeah, do and weird you see stuff. what's going on with Reggie. Exactly. How is that a justification I'm not saying for it's a justification, but it's like, would you be surprised? Because you're like, if you're CEO, why would you read the room wrong? Well, look, if you're CEO, why would you do stuff that Reggie does? Like, it's... <laughs> yeah. It, it's, all I'm going to say is I'm crazy. not surprised that Double if is friends with him. I'm, yeah, exactly. not That's all I'm, I'm actually just not surprised at all because honestly, all esports... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to say it. All celebrities in the world, not in the world, but a lot of celebrities these days just don't have a PR <laughs> manager. Back. Like yeah. literally you see Joe Marsh throwing out tweets. You see Lena just throwing out tweets, Reggie throwing out tweets. They do not talk to their PR managers or they don't have one or their PR managers are like, yes, people. And they're just like, yeah, that seems great. Throw it mm-hmm. in there. Right. Like it's just like <laughs> uh, there was a really big thing with like Nicki Minaj. I'm not going to get into it, but basically it's like she's a massive <laughs> no, celebrity. Get into it. <laughs> Just huge kidding. celebrity. Yeah. She just yeah. says the most crazy crap on Twitter all the time. Oh, yeah. It's just like, that's just no. So I think this is just, you know, we're just getting a glimpse of how these people really are. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of P- interesting. PR PR died when Twitter came out. And, and when people started doing their own Twitter accounts, yep. like it's yep. obvious, like PR, I would not want to be in PR because people are just too itchy with their fingers to tweet stuff that like, you're just like, just don't press the don't button. True. Talk. Don't press yeah. It. Just delete just the app. Ha- <laughs> hire a social media manager who could literally like make yeah. sure you don't act like an idiot. But it's like step away from the app. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please back up. <laughs> Put the phone yeah. down. It's like they can't. People can't help themselves, man. They're like, he's I tweeting. Think I'm he's make tweeting. Get in the building stupid. now. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, look. That's that's a great rant. Uh, last thing though, we need to talk about is kind of a somber moment because uh, a great solo queue. Uh, player mm. Dopa in uh, Korea is announcing his retirement because uh, his mandatory military service. Now, I mean, I don't know how long he have to serve, but he doesn't have to technically retire unless that's by choice. Maybe he just doesn't want to come back yeah. after a Dope long break. Down. Uh, but if you guys don't know who Dopa <laughs> is, he was this legendary uh, rank one uh, Korean solo queue player who just uh, contributed a lot to the game. People learned a lot from him. 
Um, if you know a mid beast, who's a, a streamer, he like definitely has a crush on him. So, <laughs> yep. uh, it's like, but it's great. Like, and you know, honestly to hear someone as impactful uh, as him, who's never been on a pro team by the way, but who is just really good at the game and share like his insights. Like it is kind of sad to see another kind of legend of the game, uh, start to walk away and move on with life. So do you guys have any thoughts on that? Uh, just to remember, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. I grew up like watching his play yeah. and like for a little more context, he did actually play pro. He played on oh, Team Dark for okay. a little bit and then he got banned. Yeah. <laughs> his whole okay. team. Yeah. Uh, he got banned because he uh, Elo yeah, boosted, boosted. I think. And the Riot was pretty serious about it mm, back then. Yeah. Um, I, he is the greatest player to never be in the pro scene, um, I think. He's one of the, at least the greatest minds to ever, to ever play the game. He was perennially number one mm-hmm. or number two like he could just get multiple accounts up there but not only that like he would explain it he would just go on stream yeah. and he'd just tell you like this uh, i think there's like a famous meme i remember where, like a fizz uh, he was playing tf and everyone thought fizz destroyed tf back then season five or four mm-hmm. and he like he just like watched fizz out of the mini once he's like oh this guy lost lane and then he just proceeded to freeze and pressure and zone and just win so good right? yeah this guy is as as good as peak faker in terms of just solo queue mechanics, right? I'm not sure about pro play because it doesn't always translate, but this guy like would just win first place competitions getting first place in LPL or not LPL, the Chinese server. He would just destroy the ladder for the longest time up until uh, Showmaker and Chovy came yeah. along. He's, he was just dis- undisputedly like top three mids in solo queue at least. So this guy is a legend. Uh, he might not be as important these days because, you know, he, as, by his own admission, there are just players that are better than him yeah. right now. I would he was so disagree. good for so long, and he. I, I say I would hard disagree. I think he is one of the most. I think he is probably the most important figure because the league is nowhere near uh, as far ahead as it is without him. Yep, I, I totally agree. I think the development of how we think about the game, like okay, we have LS these days, sure, but for the longest time it was like dope of it. Yep. like either content creators would take information or steal uh, information <laughs> yeah, from him, steal. and then they would just like either parrot it themselves or like a lot of how we think about the game, like in an intelligent manner that we think is normal now is like he was doing this crap in season three. Yep. Like he was just destroying everyone. Cause he just knew what wave management actually meant. He knew what he just knew and he shared it. Okay. Which is important. There are some very smart pros out there who just don't stream, who don't put any of their information out there. So I don't know if X Smith is smart. I don't see him stream ever. He streams like different games yeah. that aren't lead yeah. stuff like that. Right. So I think this guy is one of the most, if not the most in my mind, he's the most, but I just don't, watch that much content creation besides his stuff mm-hmm. and some other people's stuff back then. Yeah. So it, it sucks, but he could come back, right? He might just be temporarily retired. Honestly, he could just stream while he's in the military. It's not like he wasn't a pro, right? So he, he still has like the ability to play league on breaks, but uh, I think for him, he, he's announcing retirement so he doesn't have the pressure to. Yeah. Like he could just focus on finishing military. I think it's like one and a half to two years. Then he might come back if he wants. He's also super rich. Yeah, so he say, doesn't have He's going to go roll around in his uh, Scrooge <laughs> McDuck vault of <laughs> yeah. money. I'm just saying he might just enjoy it. Some people just enjoy streaming. We enjoy streaming, yeah. right? Like we'll, yeah. we'll be super rich someday from this. But yeah, yeah true. It's going to happen. It doesn't matter, right? You can still keep doing yep. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember learning some of the first things about wave management. I'm not saying I'm good at wave management still, but the, the <laughs> concept of it is still like in, you know, in it's it's like in my head because of, of watching him. And so it is really neat that, um, you know, th- these are things that I think, too, that makes kind of league a, a little bit harder than just the game itself is that it's beyond the game. You have to learn these little techniques. And for me. Uh, he was the one that kind of introduced that to me. And so that's where I think a lot of people uh, fall short. They get good at learning the actual champions, how to play the game, but how to win the overall game. That's like another game in itself. It's more yeah. of like strategy, chess minded thing. And and he really showed that that's how you can win. Um, and I also think too, like, even though he could stream, I bet part of him in there, like, even though he admits there's better players now, obviously with like military, he probably wouldn't be able to, you know, grind as much, play as much. So he wouldn't be ranked. Hi, and I think it's if I was him, I, and maybe this is how he's thinking, maybe not, but maybe he just doesn't want to show, you know, be remembered for being like the best. You know, it would suck to like he comes in a game, and obviously it's been a while, so he's not as good. Like, you know, I yeah. think that that would be maybe too hard for him to to do well, unless he could do it like full time. Okay, so Rush recently came out of Korean military, right? And he started streaming a lot again. And he was he talked a lot about his experience in the Korean military. From what he's saying and what I understood is that you actually can't make or have any money when you enter the Korean military. 
So him retiring is basically him saying and announcing to the Korean military, I'm not making any money. I have no money. So he could not uh, stream to make money. Like he couldn't make any money yeah. off of it. You couldn't have anything gotcha. in his bank account. So him retiring is also like, I think what Rush was alluding to is that a lot of Korean players, they give all their money to somebody else. Yeah. So that okay. when they I go see. into the Korean military, they they have no money as the law mm-hmm. requires them to. And then they don't make any money that's, and all that that's stuff. Funny. And then that's also why like Rush, he deleted all of his YouTube channels or YouTube videos mm, on his channel because yeah. you couldn't make passive income or any monetization. I think you might see something similar with Dopa, like if he has like Twitch VODs or anything or whatever. Hey, that's crazy. Has, yeah, it's really crazy. I And I don't know if it applies to everybody the same because Rush is not on the same level as somebody like maybe Dopa or Faker. I have no idea at all. I'm just taking this from his stream straight up. Um, so yeah. I think that is possibly why he might be saying he's retiring, but he could very well come right back as soon as he's done with military. Well, Who knows? I mean, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. That's cool. Yeah. I, ho- I hope that's an angle. I mean, it's yeah. crazy, but I hope that's the angle. And then, uh, then last, thing I, <laughs> well, I, last thing I want to say about Dopa is um, I, 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 I single handedly think that he made Twisted Fate so popular that it tricked pros into thinking it was good for like four years. Like, dude, Twisted Fate was meta. Like up until like last year for like four or mm-hmm. five years, it was being banned or picked almost all the time and it had gotten nerfed repeatedly over and over again. And then other champions were getting buffed around it that countered it. And it really felt like it's just yeah. a dopa effect, right? Like I, I <laughs> yeah, think it was, yeah. it was a little overrated. Um, still very good, obviously, because a champion with that kit is crazy, but just a little overrated. Uh, and then finally uh, with dopa, I, it, it was like – I've been watching him since like, yeah, probably like season three or season four for a long time. I mean, he was considered like either as good or better than Faker, but just in solo queue and not in pro. Mm-hmm. And then I remember he came out with this um, article like a year or two ago or like, yeah, I'm admitting like I'm not I, – I used to proud myself as literally the number one best solo queue player ever. And then now it's like it's – Closer to a 50-50 sometimes. If I'm playing against Chovy or Showmaker, I don't always win. I don't always feel yeah. like I can carry the game or like I do actually lose lane or they do things that are better than me, stuff like that. And then someone put it in the comments that they were like, this is the first time I realized that his glasses are fake and not a filter. And then I realized it and I went and I looked at his stream. His glasses are not real. His, his sunglasses they're not real. What? <laughs> they're a filter on his stream. What? I had no idea this entire time. That's hilarious. I thought he was actually wearing sunglasses while playing League of Legends the entire time. <laughs> but his brains, his brains, just that yep. big. He's that many <laughs> steps ahead so, of all of us. I could not stop laughing when I went to look at his video. I'm like, oh yeah, those are fake. <laughs> those are not real sunglasses. I, that is hilarious. I had no idea. I had no idea. With, with all these wow. retirements coming on, it makes you wonder when we're gonna get a get a uh, Hall of Fame. Yeah, we That's should get true. a Hall of Fame, hundred percent. We're due for it. I think. Uh, I think. I, I personally think that LCS top five thing was like the prelude. Like they're trying to That's test true. the water, see how much people care, and when to start. Like. I hope they don't make it regional. I hope it's a world Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think that's I think that for sure be way more impactful. Global. Like, yeah, yeah, I think it should be global, but I, I think they really need to be careful and think about how they're going to choose the voting process. Like that's true. It's, it's oh, going to be vi- like especially in Korea. Like oh my god. Like I, obviously Faker is getting in right, but if like a, some player gets in right, that yeah. maybe some Korean players think they shouldn't, or some player that doesn't get in that maybe some players think they should, it could create a lot of awkward backlash. So I think that's the main fear that Riot might have, right? Is like that's interesting. Some fans yeah. are going to go a little too crazy over it. <laughs> a little cuckoo. Obviously the T1 it's like, fans. It's like fake or yeah. Uzi and then like is there's a lot of controversy with anyone else who gets uh, in, Bang I think. Wolf. Even though there's so many amazing Bangy. players. See, I, I, I would get mad if I heard Wolf was getting into it. You want to win Worlds <laughs> back to back? I mean, I feel you like that's hard. I, I don't care. Sure. <laughs> I don't know a lot about that's it, the, but I mean, that the Yeah. Maybe they just maybe they just need to uh do Hall of Fames regionally, but then Take the top votes from each region or whatever, like top two or top three, and those kind of get incorporated into the global Hall of Fame. Or do two. Do two different ones? I don't know. There's lots of ideas. So you have a regional Hall of Fame. I, I don't know. And have uh, a world Hall of Fame. I think that's why that's, that's why it's not a yeah. thing. Think about no one it. knows how to Just do it. Just think about well. it, though. If like, we were voting all LCS, I mean, obviously our region, we have the most uh, knowledge of our region. I mean, maybe they fall over there, but as a fan base, like we know our players the best so we would pick who we think is the best players 
you know, that, that come in the Hall of Fame and the ones that have like overwhelming votes. Like, I think that would be a best representation of who are most now, like see the problem is you get players. trolls and you have internet people who troll mm, votes and do stupid stuff right you're so right. you always have to be careful. like like riot has to be really careful about that too and like <sighs> you're right like never like mind movie I reviews mean, and stuff I, I, like morbius has so many five star reviews for just because it's a meme oh my god <laughs> like it's just a meme well, they always they always <laughs> mix in like a panel or something of like experts That's true. Yeah, outside of be. it but my my more controversial takes like do we even deserve to have people in the hall of fame all right we the deserve it in the hall, hall of fame are we was all NA Hall of Fame. Right. Yeah. I, sure, sure. We can have any Hall of Fame, but we already made it, right? Like the top 25 sure. players of all time are there. We could choose like the number one or yeah, two, yeah. right? And that's fine. But like does – besides Bjergsen and Double and do they even deserve to be in a Hall of Fame? If we're really being honest, yeah, like World remember top those top 20 lists that they used to do yeah. before Worlds every year? Double would be like 19th or 18th. Yeah. I think the highest of players ever got in was like Bjergsen at 11 for 2016 something TSM like that, or yeah. something like that. Like that's the highest we've ever gotten. Do we deserve to be on a Hall of Fame all time unless we – Every region gets their Hall of Famers. Then uh, I don't know. It's a little weird. Yeah, because most Hall of Fames are just like a domestic league. My right? dream, man. It's complicated. Just, it's a weird I'm just one. Kidding. I'm just, just being realistic. <laughs> it's complicated, but like, it, I don't think Bjergsen is on the same level as Faker. No, I, this might just be a weird right. thing no, to say. Yeah, I don't. Right? No, not <laughs> even, not not even close. Faker. Yeah, let's. You know what? Let's just stick. Let's just stick to regional regional uh, Hall of Famers. I want to feel good. We'll Almost, just know that, yeah. you know, LCK and LPL, those will be the real Hall of Fame. <laughs> we yeah. just won't say it. We'll just, just be, you know, we get it. <laughs> kind of like, you know, we all, hey, look, we all have our regions. We all know LCK and LPL are better. It's just, you know, but we still like to, you know, think ours is good. Hey, there so. was a year NA did better than LCK International. That's true. Oh, all I'm saying is Faker never won NALCS and Double F did it eight times. That, that's True. all I'm gonna say. That's Same all with Hooney. Same with Hooney. Same yeah, with exactly. Hooney. <laughs> Hooney never won. Hooney never that's won right. LCS. Hooney was Faker. Scrub. Hooney was Faker's uh, uh, ambassador, exactly. right? And he just he couldn't exactly. do it. Yeah. He just. Hooney uh, did not play like Faker, but he was on the same team well, as Faker. <laughs> it's hey, confirmed. We, we had, already uh, confirmed who this. Who was that guy? Who was that guy? Uh, Pair, power, pair, Wait, something. He was. Uh, you got it. He was on Keep Phoenix going. Wine. You Pyrian? got it. It's it. Pyrian. He sucked for Faker, bro. That's NA talent, baby. NA how, import. Look, how many? How many <laughs> world champions have we seen come to NA and crumble? Or exactly. world finalists? We have the A hardest lot. region by far. Piglet, Bang, Bang went crazy coming exactly. over here. I mean, it's just too hard. Honestly, we have the hardest this region. This league is just way difficult. With, that's why it's so hard for us to go far in worlds because we're it's so hard already. In NA, <laughs> we're just we're just burnt out. Just, we're just, just burnt out. The difficulty level started so high. This is exactly why our region is the best, right? It is because even we can figure out how, why we're the best. Well, our we, region we is already worlds. The rest. It is worlds. That is true too. Our, so. We've been playing worlds all year, and you get to go to one tournament and win and say you're the best. Yeah. Nice try. Nice try, Faker. People asking nice for try. more international tournaments. Hello, we've had that all year. We've had Forget that it. for We're like good. six years now. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Anyways. Man. You know what? I think we need to end the podcast. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we've, got, we've gotten on the LCS uh, copium uh, train, and it's I like it. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the high. So, uh, <laughs> Danny's any final winning thoughts? worlds, guys. Danny is winning worlds by himself. He's going to get a pentakill and, 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 and throw Faker right into, into the military. Boom. Yeah, there you go. He's gonna get a pentakill and not get world's MVP. Actually, someone did that in LPL. They got a pentakill and the jungler got MVP. Oh, oh yeah, recently. Dude, that like, sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Someone listed. Junglers uh, always get it. A list of like all the MVPs in NA. I th- I'm pretty sure. Okay, uh-huh. I don't remember. I think only one ADC has ever gotten an MVP, and it was Arrow that one time. Otherwise, no other oh, ADC wow. has ever gotten an MVP. No, Double's gotten it once. Double has definitely gotten MVP. Really? Once in his I life. didn't see it in the list. I thought it was like literally two eighty carries in that list, and then most of them were jungles and yeah. Mids. Okay, maybe it yeah, was. I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was. And then maybe it was top. Oh, it was top lane. I'm pretty sure Summit's the only top lane MVP. I think that was it. I'm pretty sure. And he's not here. Yeah, he's not here anymore. I'm. I'm like. <laughs> this is what we do to top lane MVPs. Yeah, I'm pretty that's sure not it's LCS just, for you. He's the only top lane MVP, and I think Double Lift is one at once, and Arrow is one at once. So there's only two, uh, yep. and then all the other ones have been jungle, mid, and support, and it's mostly jungle. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, right. Freaking summit. Well, uh, anyways, so that's going to wrap it up for us. Oh, final note, too, is they did release the ADC uh, top five. And I think yeah, it was it's double of sneaky. Yeah. Double of sneaky. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Double of sneaky. Sven. Double of sneaky. Sven. Sven. 
Yeah, Zen was third. Zen was fifth. I think Zen Zen was fifth. Zen was fifth. Maybe Wild Turtle was fourth. Uh, Stixay, no, Stixay was fifth. Stixay was was fifth. Stixay was fifth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Turtle was third. Turtle's got a way longer career. There's no way you put Zen over Wild Turtle. No, no, no. I just put some random names. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, and then preseason stuff came out, guys. You want to talk for another hour? Just kidding. No, nope. no, we can nope. talk about later. No, no, I'll, I'll see you after next week. Preseason doesn't even matter, dude. Uh, let's wait World till the end over. of the split, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Too I'm much fine LCS. Too much uh, copium. Too much LCS copium. But that's gonna do it for us. Thank you again to my awesome pals, friends, buddies, co-hosts, Kevin, Goons. Mitchell, and Alistair. <laughs> For always sharing their wise insight, it's good to just chat some league, report it, and speaking of reporting, enjoy your climb on the riff. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace! I'm out of here. (laughs)